It is seventh v eighth in a mouth-watering contest at Optus Stadium in Perth. The Sunday ticket on Fox, a seriously good matchup. This game, of course, brought forward five days. The Tigers due to head back to Melbourne after what has been an extended road trip. They've been Brisbane, Sydney, Perth, Sydney, and then back to Perth for tonight's clash against the West Coast Eagles as I welcome David King and Lee Montagna. This is going to be a beauty. Should be a ripper. Really looking forward to this one, Joey and Sarah. I think that Richmond are getting back to some sort of form. We're seeing them all conquering last week in that last quarter. They were, they were brilliant for that last 15 minutes or so, Joey. Lambert back into the lineup. They lose Prestia. This has been their case all year, hasn't it? Just lose one, get one back. Yeah, and they got their mojo back, as you said. They're playing some awesome footy in recent weeks. They've been on the road, as you said, for a number of weeks. I'm sure they're looking forward to getting home, but got to get the job done tonight over in Perth. The last 20 minutes against the Bombers was electrifying. That was as good as football we've seen this year. If we have a look at the ladder, just how tight it is between between these two teams and look both would love the double chance and look to push up I know Kingy you've got some thoughts on on whether that's even possible given where they sit but it is a hugely important clash tonight yeah it is and Richmond's form against top eight teams has been been well down this year one win five losses across the course this season already and the West Coast at home are an imposing challenge show and you, you look at their lineup Allen and Kennedy back in, so you'd expect those guys to obviously play forward of centre. Allen's been used in different roles all season, but they're starting to get some strength back. I know what's not there, but let's talk about what is there. They won on passion and spirit last week yeah. in a great performance. It was a great win last week, and guys like Hearn and Yo are getting back to their best form after being back for a few weeks, and you know, they don't lose too often at home, but they got beaten by Essendon a couple of weeks ago, so they'll want to bounce back as well and put in a big showing against the, uh, the it, reigning champs. It was an incredibly gutsy and courageous win. Adam Simpson would be so pleased with what they did last week. Yeah, yeah. The standards at West Coast have been set for many a year. They know what they've got to do. They come in to play a role. They're not asked to be best on ground, Joey. Come in and play to their system. But you can read a form line with these, these two teams because they've both played GWS, Adelaide and Essendon in the last four weeks. So Richmond are 3-0, and zero, West Coast 1-2. and two. Does that mean Richmond in better form? Oh, I think it does. I think we concede they're probably playing better football right now. Probably, but then the home factor has got to weight heavily towards the West Coast Eagles. They are such a better team at home than they are on the road. Well, Richmond, of course, played well against the Bombers there, so kind of got a yeah. home ground feeling, yeah. even though they've spent the week in Sydney before heading back again. It is such an unusual season. 2021 on Fox Woody. It all continues after this short break as the West Coast Eagles face the reigning premiers, the Tigers. Sunday ticket on Fox Footy. We are set for a red hot encounter, encounter at Optus Stadium, and the Tigers coming off a great 39 point win over the Bombers in the Dreamtime Clash. They're starting to hit their strides. We know what this team can do when they are at their brutal best. And David King, one of the most interesting things and intriguing things about tonight's clash is the two different styles we're going to see. Can you break that, that down for us a bit? I think Richmond's ability to punish is, is, is the best in the competition. This sort of sounds a bit silly, but every team creates turnovers, about 70 per game per team. So it's then being able to get that on the scoreboard that becomes the difference in, in the game. So we talk about strike rate, your ability to convert, winning the ball back in whatever method it is and get it on the scoreboard per 100 intercepts. So they're going at 97 points per 100 intercepts at the moment over the last five weeks, which is well up from the average of 70 points. It's almost 50% higher. And you can see there, you know, the, the second ranked team in the competition is Brisbane, who are 20% below what Richmond are doing. So what they're doing at the moment is so far the best in the competition, that's why they they pose such a challenge. And this is what it looks like. So it's all about speed and exploding from traffic. They love playing this sort of ball. Long down the line, they queue up for the crumb, and when they get that crumb, you'll see all their smalls exploding forward of centre. They come into support, secure possession, and then go into space and challenge the opposition immediately to get the job done. You can see them, look at that. Go, go, go. They're all exploding into space. It's incredibly difficult, Joey, to defend that. Same thing here. And this is from a clearance, but it's an ugly, scrappy clearance. Look at them go. Look at them explode. They challenge the opposition immediately to go with them. And if you don't, if you've got one lazy player or one tired player, tired midfielder in particular, you get picked apart. And sometimes it's ugly. But messy football is the way Richmond love to play. Yeah, they get numbers to the football. That's the key. They're always outnumbering. You see there they support. And sometimes it's just leg speed. They just run with power. They're very hard to stop when they get going. 
pressure rating last week against the Bombers late was pretty impressive too. 223 in the forward half. It was off the charts kind of stuff. Uh, Joey, you want to have a look at the ruck battle and what we might be able to see here? Yeah, well, I think as Kingy said, Richmond is such a good team at scoring off that turnover in general play. If West Coast are to get Richmond, it's going to be at the stoppages. That's their strength and we know Richmond, it's not their strength. So look for Nick Nat in the ruck. He's going to be up against Marby Old Chol. If there is someone that can match Nick Nat in the ruck, it might be this man. He's been pretty good since he's come back into the side. But if West Coast are to get Richmond, it's going to have to be in the clinches. Elliot Yo's got a couple of games under his belt. Dom Sheed's in red-hot form. This man's going to have to have a big influence to, uh, to win the game for the Eagles. Well, we know Nick Nat doesn't play a whole heap of minutes, David King, so that's the window for the Tigers in the ruck. As we head to Optus Stadium in Perth, the first bounce, round 13, continues right here on Fox Footy and what is going to be one of the matches of the round. Cracking game, umpires tonight, Lee Howson, Brett Rosebury and Cameron Dorr. And out of the middle, Chole tries to extract the footy. I get the feeling we'll end up with another ball up here. <laughs> Nat Nui can't get My it out. Ball. Thank you. All of the stars on display tonight. And two great styles in which these teams go about it. Nat Nui, Potchin getting in the way there of Yo. Martin, little kick out of the middle. Rewalt probably should have reeled that in. Duggan is there as well. Martin again, a deep inside 50. Trying to get hold of it in the back half is Edwards. Did well. Good handball. Out of trouble here all of a sudden with Foley. Did that really well, Edwards. Almost lost him. Hi, Richmond. And then a high free for Nick Floston. Interesting. Looks like floston has got the Darling matchup early. A little bit undersized, but plays more of that gatekeeper type reading role for Richmond. So, so important in uh, starting their attack. Yeah, mate. They go high. Normally, this is what the West Coast defence want. Nat Newey gets back in support. Foley, Sheed. Bouncing into the middle. Numbers here for the Tigers. Grimes, Hooley. Hooley. Neat little ball out wide. So Pickett's got a good look at it here. Plenty of time. Just backs up from the mark to give himself a little bit more time. No one comes at him. So now goes forward with a high ball. Rewalt's got his eyes on this. And over the top of that was Coleman Jones. Almost took the mark. Almost stuck. Hearn. Just a little end over end ball out of trouble here. Ralph Smith was there. Picked up around the corner by Arts and missed shot at goal. And Coleman Jones almost had enough of that, I reckon. He yeah, nearly got it. There's that forward 50 domination again. That's what Richmond are going to be wanting to look for in their forward 50, getting the ball to ground and getting those ground level shots on goal. Move it on. Play on. Shannon Hearn. Pumping kick out of full back. Long one looking for Nat Newey. Did he get eased out of it? Good job done by Chol. Little fumble. But numbers with the Tigers. Been a good start for them. Another fumble from Pickett. But they go back inside. Not a great fall. And pretty well taken in the end by Luke Foley. Just game four for Foley. This is that controlled play. We're going to see here that Job spoke about a couple of minutes ago. Outside to Kennedy. Back in the side again today. At the back was Baker. Cotton put his head over a hard one and won it. Reeled it back in, just as it looked like the Eagles were going to get hold of it. Just a, a great example of why Josh Kennedy is such a great player. In the, competes in the air, and then in ground level, he lays a tackle. Such a hard-working key forward. Elliot Yo worried out of it. Martin flicked it out. They break it up in the air now. Good hands there from Redden. Jones tumbles it forward, but Floston able to control things. Across half-back, Lambert. Broad. That's not a great ball from him. Sets McIntosh a task. They turn it over. And this is where they can really hurt your West Coast. Duggan sits it up inside 50. Allen gets an aerial look. It's pumped away from him. And is that deliberate? Right on song at Optus. Not liking that decision. Chole did well in the body contest. 
Impressive little kick in here. Coleman Jones again trying to track this. Rass there, Rewald over the head, Bolton onto it. To prefers to go around the corner and just hit the belly of the ball. Didn't get it to spin the way he hoped. Some good early signs from Chol right here. He's winning the physical body, body contest against Nick Nat Nui. We come into the game probably thinking that's West Coast advantage, but the first three contests, he's been terrific in that. And just saw again, Leper as well, that burst forward with Bolton and Martin on the end. They run and carry that shot on goal. Foley wide and pick it. Repeat entries here for the Tigers. Rebound at the back. Barris ground level, rebound off the ground. The Tigers get their first. Only a matter of time. The ball's been living in their forward half. And Jack, who's in good form, kicks the first of the game. Living in their forward line at 6-2 to two inside 50s early on and just repeat entries, put the defence under pressure and Jack Rerolt's ability to be in the air and then recover quickly. Leopard is just so clever at ground level as well. And yeah, Richmond are getting what they want. They're forcing West Coast long down the line. They're not getting that uncontested mark going. And then Richmond's getting what they want. They're getting the ground level ball inside 50 and a nice easy goal for Jack. Just a little kick off the ground. Fourth time he's kicked the opening goal of a game this year and he's just three goals away from joining the Tiger Royalty. Look at Nat Nui out of the middle from 60. Not his best kick. And just on Jack Rewalt. He's going to join the likes of Bartlett, Dyer and Burke in that 300 club. Nat Nui out of the middle excites the crowd, JB, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. It's a special noise when he gets anywhere near it, Nick Nat. Jones puts a good tackle on Baker. <laughs> Just noticed that uh, Nick Nat in the last couple of contests just matching that physicality. Chole probably took him by surprise a little early on and he certainly fought back well in the last couple of contests. Good night for footy in Perth. Play on, play on, both engaged. Heard the umpire. Broad, they flick the handballs around. McIntosh. High and long, well set up behind the footy though, West Coast. An impressive young defender, Luke Foley. go inside again and big fly darling here he is Nat Newey at the back Nat Newey big big goal wow that's something you don't always see from this star of the game Well, Chol sparked him into a little bit of action, didn't he? Nick Nat, he's been terrific. I'm loving this ruck duo. Both Chol and Nat, and we are trying to get forward hard and test the opposition ruckman out. Chol missed out up the other end, but Nick Nat made the most of a really difficult right, shot. Guys. What a great finish. 108 career goals. That's probably the best of them there from Nick Nat Nui. Back in the middle. Two great surges from him. Bolton Go. now. Stars every which way you look here in this game. Off the back, Coleman Jones caught cold. Really good tackle by Harry Edwards. Nailed him. Elliot Yo matching him with uh, Dustin Martin at that centre bounce as well. Not the required journey, so Foley has to kick around the corner. Yo spoiling Duggan in the end. McIntosh, Edwards, and Richmond once again. Another entry, Rewalt there, Coleman Jones at the back, Play both on. hands on it, had a second go, Martin, smothered by Barris, did well, went for the fresh airy, Hernan, the Martin smother again, locks it in. Well, you just see there, Martin and Yo started on each other in that centre bounce, and then Yo was competing on the wing, Martin pushed hard really forward, which is that Richmond tactic, and he puts you under pressure when he goes forward like that, and almost had an opportunity to score a goal. Forward 50 stoppage here for the Tigers. Shallow throw in two. Coleman Jones took possession. 
just allowed the ball to fall out of his hands. Duggan. Very important the player. West Coast. And the free on kick. the man. Just arm around. For Dalek. Stan. And that's the match up, isn't it? That's what we're worried about. Nick Glosson isn't renowned in the air on a, on a player like Jack Darling, who's obviously a lead in this part of the game. Oh, They've gone with Broad on Ryan matchup as well. As obviously, they're worried about Ryan's aerial prowess. Darling high and wide and easy in the end for Grimes. Just interesting that they've gone that, that, that way, isn't it? Because Vlosten's undersized yep. against Darling, but Callum, Broad is Oscar. is oversized for Ryan. So they obviously think it's a better matchup for them. Yeah, Broad's normally the one that can play tall and small. They're happy on him on the goal square and a tall. They're also happy him on a small player up really high at the ground. So he's their balancer. Bolter with Kennedy. Gaff. Handle Edwards. Redden. Over the head. Vlosten just looks so steady and... Goes for that risky kick in the corridor. Keeps it working out wide. Is short. Baker now. And eventually with McIntosh. Dan, in his home state. Pinjara not all that far away from the stadium. About an hour's drive. And we'll throw it in on the wing. Just emphasises the importance Rich. of those intercept marks Callum at half back Oscar. line. Vlosten takes the intercept mark and then changes the angle. And Richmond are able to move the ball forward. And they get away from that mess. And now they've got to... A ball up and forward of centre. Premiership coaches watch on. Bolton. Edwards. Can't quite get a handle, Sheed, but then that was good. Long ball to a 2v2 and Floston again in the air. Showing some really good early touch. Short. They spread the ground here, Pickett. Back to Broad. Spits it forward to Hooley. Stand, play on. Me. Goes immediately into the pocket. Almost caddy. Right in. I guess the one part of their game we Callum, thought they West might Coast dominate Trump. is Oscar. West Coast forwards marking. It's the Richmond backs Callum that have won Oscar. that early battle at this stage yep. of the game. Yep. Josh Caddy played the first three games of the year. And then out of the side and has played the last two, three including this one. So we're looking to hold his spot. Rioli handled a short. Could have nearly gone all the way from there. Saw Rewalt, but gee, there was a lot of traffic around him. and That doesn't look good for Dom Shee. Bit of a... Flick on the nose as Kenny, the a long, long way from home, goes into the middle of the ground. Good looking ball here to Langdon, gives it off to Edwards, back to Langdon, who can get their boot and go forward. Redden eventually, kick over the head of Jermaine Jones and Grimes to tidy up to Bolter. Turnover. Right out, Jack. Huge frame of Kennedy and out. Time back on. Stand. He has it on the wing. Play on. Long ball, but really only yeah. Coleman Jones in the air in the end. And 50. They didn't clear the area. Uh, Dom Sheed calling it on himself. So blood rule, which will allow... West Coast to set up behind the footy. You need to clear the area. Just can't yep. uh, professionally thought out, I would say, <laughs> JB. I think, I think that is correct. Modern Stand players, very on. intelligent, BT. Yep. yep. So a squaring ball for Broad. Good. Broad to Hawley. Play on. Plenty of space on this big ground. Short. Ready. High footy inside. Bolton the flyer. Rewald as well. Bolton had a second nibble. Allen, some other arts, quick handball, had to be Edwards, a little bit of a fumble there. Gee, who was that coming through with anger and aggression? It was Lambert. And shoveled it towards the boundary line. Sheets been knock on the nose as a result of that collision with the hip of Lambert. Being patched up as we speak. Only interest there is if there's a concussion issue as Allen. Had his own concussion issue recently. High ball, well done, Hooley. Focused on the ball brilliantly. Back into the middle. Floston busy early.
Malta. Wobbles a uh, sidewinder inside 50. Numbers back here with West Coast, but Rioli was good. Cochin. Barris, a really good one on one defender. They arrive at ground level to help him, but Rotham is in all sorts. Rioli, Bolton misses. Down to you, Xavier. Yeah, no signs of concussion for Dom. Wiped his nose and was ready to come back on. So he's just taking a seat now, but he's ready to go. Just the importance there of Jack Rewalt being able to get the ball to ground and half the contest not being outmarked because we know how dynamic and dangerous the Richmond ground level forward 50 players are. Barris, 94 games. Long ball from defence. Floston is playing well. Three and a set marks already for Floston. Deep inside. Rewalt's got the position here. Barris just committed too far forward, misread it. Rewald onto it early, backed up. Right on mark, Tom. Just clear it out, clear it out. Ten metres. Decision here whether he kicks the drop punt or goes around the yeah, corner. I'm thinking Jack. he's going Come around up. the corner, Rewald. Two metres back. Kick of 15 metres. No problems for a guy of Rewald's quality. Feeling he almost prefers that set shot to the standard one, Jack. He's in good touch, as we said. Well, Rewalt, after this one here, completing the mark and kicking his second goal of the game, that takes him on to 6.98. So he could become the 24th player to kick 700 goals in the VFL slash AFL. Probably looks like he's on target to do that today. It looks like he's rejuvenated this season. He's certainly got his legs back. Oh. High bounce of the ball. That knew it is. Sheed back on the ground. Gets a push. In the back. West Coast. Dan. Dom Sheed. Oh. That's what's ahead of him. To centre half forward and carries everyone through. Comes Langdon and he went for Kennedy. Missed him. And then apologises because he shouldn't have had enough time to straighten up Nick, potentially. Zach Langdon. A ball in. And this is where Nat knew he can get really dangerous. To the front, Duggan. Cochin. Nat Newey went back and got it, but it's broken up. Plenty of big free seven beanies around tomorrow. That's all happening. The slide. Big day for the Danaher family and for football generally. Lots of money raised there. Buy a beanie if you can help. Nat Newey threw it on the boot. Kennedy in a one-out contest. And what he did then was protect the drop zone of the footy so that only he could mark it. And it was brilliantly done. Josh, Josh. Probably run around play on the left here. Perfect, thank you. Kennedy, or is he going to go the right foot? No, it's around on the left. Players play on. coming at him. Kick away. Will advantage be paid? Should be. Kennedy gets his first. So, all the big names kicking goals here early. Kennedy and Nat Nui. Rewalt. Well, he kicked the first goal of the game for West Coast. And we just see here the repeat efforts to just fight and fight. That's scrappy, but he's getting it forward, Nick Nanui. And then, as BT, you called it, just Josh Kennedy's ability to protect the drop zone. 
was only he was the only one that was ever going to be able to mark it. Just wonderful forward craft, and then the, the execution at the end. But the big rock stars have come to play on a Sunday night. Nat Newey, Kennedy, as you said, BT. Revolt with a couple at the other end. It's perfect. Edwards spun a couple of times. <whistles> Gets away with one. Very good on debut Thanks, last week, JB nice. Edwards. Thank you, back in this yeah. one. Proud dad will be watching Tyson, of course, star for the Adelaide Block. Footy Club. West Coast. And that Newey causing some problems. Fly on, fly on. Wants to go, he eventually does. Really composed Luke Foley. Stand. Wide to Duggan. Fly on. And here he comes. Big JK. Mountainous man. And that's West Coast at their best, isn't it? They win the clearance and they look, they lower their eyes really well going inside 50 to their leading targets. Whilst they're all big men, they're still great on a lead as well, not just in that standalone aerial contest. Had to have three time Premiership line, Justin Lepich, part of the coverage tonight. And Kennedy to kick his second in about a minute. He's had a good set shot here. Leper, you talked about how good they are at finding space, but Josh Kennedy's leading pattern there, he just took the Richmond defender away from where he wanted to go, dummy lead back, and then that's his best attribute, I think, is just how athletic he is, both offensively and defensively. He's incredibly hard-working key forward. To the middle we go. Hit the last two of the game. Kennedy, beautiful from Alan Desheed. Wrong-footed on his right, but he did a great job getting it down there to Waterman. Baker's under real pressure. Ryan closing. Got rid of it in the nick of time, but it was a hurried ball. Pressure bearing down on him. Just starting to get the ascendancy on the clearances, West Coast. They're 10 to 5 around the ball, and there's just a couple of centre bounce clearances in a row for them. Richmond are going to have to tighten up around the ball. Saw Duggan in that shot. Missed the last five games. So important. Holding the arm down, Richmond. To what West Coast do behind the footy is Marbio Chol receives a free kick. He's been good. Rangy left football, Coleman Jones. Castagna. They set up the triangle and get out of it pretty well. Elliot Go though. Yes. Must have just slipped as he kicked because he couldn't have picked out Basha Hooley any better. You can see Caddy, bottom of your screen there, wanting it to come across. Baker saying, you're going to have to go that way. And Hooley saying, that's a real long way. I'd prefer to go here. He does. There's Edwards. Little funny kick out the back door. Wasn't fantastic. The missed scoop there by Nelson. They still get it. Elliot Yo bang it on the boot. Good yardage. Hooley, Allen, and happy to see it over the line. And playing well is Hooley out on that wing. You can often see the mismatches, can't you, with the tools. That, that it was Hooley backing on Oscar Allen and then even Waterman on short earlier. So there are a taller forward line against a much shorter back line. Sheed getting real busy. Bolton broke it up with brilliance. Edwards got a little hand in. Clean pick up Lambert. Chole reefed into the ground. They're going to take advantage. So bringing it away is Cole. Broad. Arched away from Darling. Coming forward to defend Duggan. Lambert. Bolton just can't keep it in. 
Leopard, just looking at both Kennedy and Darling, who would you prefer? You were a great defender. Who would you prefer to play on? Which style would you think would be easier? Well, probably none of them, to be honest, BT. Yeah. They're both superstars. But one thing about Josh Kennedy, the lead up forward is always often the hardest one to play because they get the easiest delivery. Hooley. Cotchen. Play on. Wheel and go. Low ball. Rewalt the second grab. Little one to Edwards. Near the boundary. It was on target. Did well to chop it off here, Jack Redden. Not ready to refire and go. So Ryan's looking for something out of the middle. Common Jones did well to push him wide. And now he has to unload. Nat Nui and Grimes. Real battle there. Grimes did well not to let the big man loose. So, Leopard, what you're saying is leave Mel Michael to Kennedy. <laughs> and, I, and I play nobody. That's, that's always a bit. Good to have the choice. Ball in. Right in front of Xavier Ellis. Beautiful hands, Nat Newey. And a little bit of territory here for West Coast, especially if that ball goes out. That's a good result. X, what are you seeing down there? Well, it's intriguing what they're doing with Liam Ryan. Liam Ryan, uh, five minutes ago, was one out in the goal square, and then t uh, 30 seconds ago, he's running the ball out from full back. So they're rotating the forwards through the goal square. Kennedy, Ryan, Darling at the moment sitting there. Premiership Hawk, Xavier Ellis on the boundary. Doing a great job, this ball getting locked in. Cochin, Sheed's been really busy lately. Back to Redden, sells a bit of candy, and then inside 50. But taken out of it, Darling, simply marking the end for Baker. They just support their back so well, Richmond. Yep. They get extra numbers back behind the ball, and so they don't often get outmarked. Look at them scatter and spread here. Short did well. He was pulled up slightly with the handball. Gets it back. Little chip kick over the top here to Castagna. Players lose. Do they do this so well? Lambert back into the side and just missed it a little bit. And Redden doing a good job for West Coast. Foley's got a little bit of the ball as well. That's not such a great kick. Made it difficult. Although Cripps did really well. Tried to fire it to Gaff. Rewalt's onto it. Horrible. Had more time than he thought there. Did Jack Rewalt? Hold on, Yo. Doesn't matter. Listen to the crowd at Optus Stadium. Yo piling through. High one. 1v2. One and a hold, I reckon. And it's going to go Richmond's way, is it? It is. Good oh, result for the Tigers. Well, they didn't have to do it, did they? They had the 2v1 advantage. It looked like an easy mark and goal for Jack Darling. And didn't really... Oh, it's just... Oh, it's such small contact, but gives Richmond another opportunity. Yeah, you're right. I don't reckon he did have to do that. So Baker slows things down. What about this crowd getting going when they had some free ball through the middle? Caddy and Bolton... A little bit overhead and gave an opportunity. Castagna. Richmond forwards wanted in quick, so Castagna obliges. High foot, he stuck it on the head, didn't give him a chance to run and jump at it. Barris from the back pocket, very, very high. Short, defending well. Did he get caught high? No, he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. Thought I heard him say throw it in. Come back on. So they bring it in. Stand, play on. Hooley. Wheels around and then kicks it to a dangerous spot. Barrows in good shape. Redden spins out of there. Nelson. Langdon. Marlon, back here. Back to the nine. Play on. Love the ball in Hearn's Stand. hands. Play on. Such a penetrating user. That's a short one, but it works to Luke Foley. Rotham. Holding West Coast. And this is the young Luke Edwards. So these are the uncontested marks that Damien Hardwick talked about having a control against the West Coast Eagles. And they've been doing a pretty good job. There's only 16 today. They normally want to get around 25 or 30 a quarter, West Coast. So this is the first real time they've been able to get this part of their game going. And with just over a minute remaining. They've done well in that area. 
Mate, you know, though, the two teams contrasting styles. It's just been a really good contest this first quarter, hasn't it? Stand, play on. You kick. Redden done quite well. Cripps just bangs it forward. Ryan. A minute 13. Don't reckon he'll have any trouble with the journey. She's that back got turned quick, BT. Yeah. <laughs> That signifies he's having a shot at goal. <laughs> Why not? Look at that. Not worried. He's not even thinking about technique, this guy. He's no. just Jamie, thinking that he Jamie. knows how to kick the footy. Jamie. And he reckons he can probably get the journey. Such a beautiful action when he goes for goal. So Ryan from just beyond the 50, looking for a little bit of leverage. That's magnificent. That is just a beautiful kick. Slightly short, broad. Baker, tested on his left, not so good. It's a good result here for the West Coast Eagles. They thought it was ricocheted over off the boot of Waterman. Was it a bump ball off yep. Waterman? Yeah. Yep. Third umpire, stands your ground as Nat Newey again. Starting Good. to really influence to stand yeah. Good. 15 Play seconds on. to go end to end here for Richmond. Good. Mark here will help. Arts stripped of it. Three seconds left. No further scoring. Entertaining first term. In the West, it's the Eagles by four points. the stadium all the big guns arrived rewalt kicked a couple kennedy kicked a couple it's a tight margin at quarter time west coast by just four points let's get to abby holmes and justin lippich well oh, thank you bt what a game of footy we have on our hands both sides starting well but left what did you make of that opening term oh what a terrific both teams had moments where they got the game on their terms yep. which is awesome and one matchup that i've been loving watching at the moment is the knickknack versus show matchup both had times in the game where they've dominated. Barbie or Troy Early got the ascendancy like you saw here, pushed Nick Nat out of the way, and then the second half of the quarter, it was Nick Nat who started getting that aerial dominance. And one thing you have to watch for Nick Nat on all occasions in a forward 50 stoppage, he's going to want to grab that ball out of the ruck. Yeah. And he's done it three times now in the quarter, and he obviously finished with a terrific goal there. And the other part of this match that I'm loving is Whoever's running forward is going with him, and whoever's running back, they've got to go with him as well. It's an excellent matchup. Do you think that Marby Urchel potentially caught him off guard early? Or maybe he did, because he probably looked at it and thought, this should be a good game for me today, but Marby really started well on him. Yeah, he absolutely did. Let's get down to Xavier Ellis at ground level. X-Man, what do you got for us? Thanks, Ab. A lot of talk about West Coast manipulation in the forward line, but don't worry about the Richmond halfbacks. Short, Veloster and Hooley, they are not intimidated at all. They have not flinched, sat at halfback and are bouncing the ball out and finding those numbers like they always do. Thanks, X. Great insight from Abby and Justin Lepich as we get ready to start this second term. Tight game in the West. And Nat Newey just climbs up. Nicely broken up by Graham, but then he's just bear hugged. They flick it to the back. Martin tumbles it to half forward. Bolton now straightens up and then almost missed it. Entirely, in fact, he did. That's out in the full. That's fine. Stand, thank you. Stun back around. <coughs> thank you, that's fine. Stand. Just a bit of a miss kick there. Didn't quite nail it the way, the way he would have liked. Rotham from deep in defence. My footy. In the end, Darling gave it away. Arts. Kennedy. Sorry, Edwards to Martin. Martin finds Caddy. Josh Caddy almost Ten. within his range here. Dustin Martin says, your kick. Two on, Josh. Shoot at goal. So Caddy.
for an early one here in the second. Should come back a little, does. Is it enough? Beautifully designed kick, though, and he struck it well. Quick release. Stand. Duggan. But crowded Move it on. Nice ahead of him. So short to Nelson. Stand. Richmond have done a good job so far of the denying this uncontested mark Play game on. from West Coast. So they've been able to close the space well and force them long down the line. Play on. Cripps. Yo. Great to have him back playing footy for that reason. So damaging by hand and foot. Kennedy. Lovely ball. Jermaine Jones. Kennedy gets it back. They've opened him up here. Cripps. Elliot. Yo. Brilliant. We just see here is a centre half forward, key forward here, Josh Kennedy, just being able to make two good decisions. Follow up again, his athleticism that we talked about. He got up the ground, then pushed hard forward. Just got so many strings to the bow. Jamie Cripps had his issues with set shots this year, but that's beautiful. First of this second term to the West Coast Eagles. Cripps gets his first. Well, what Richmond love to do with these stoppies is like to play that spare defender at the back. You can see Nathan Broad just really guarding space like a goalkeeper. But the negative of this is you can just pierce your way through if there's no pressure on the actual ball. And there wasn't any ball pressure. So West Coast were just able to easily uncontested mark their way through the uh, Richmond defence. Joel versus Nat Nui. Wow. Beautiful bounce in the middle. Martin, bit of a fumble. Allows Yo to jump on it. Jermaine Jones, Baker. I'm sure that was a legal disposal. Nat Nui bullied his way through. It was impressive. Broad, Edwards, Lambert and Hooley. Hooley over the top, found the outside runner. This is Caddy. Got a lot of space. Fair bit of time here. Back inside, loose handball, not good. Turnover. Sheed. He try and open up on the other side of the ground. Tried to sneak the handball in and under Foley. Got Lambert a little bit high. And Price says play on. Jermaine Jones, Ryan, Edwards, soccer. Play on. Now Nelson. Play on. Duggan. Kicks to a dangerous spot. Turned over. Martin. Caddy. Looping handball for Rioli. Back to Caddy. Back to Rioli, but he walks into trouble. Advantage. An advantage paid is going to work for Graham. Sticks it through. Gee, that was reflex from Rioli once he went to ground. Fantastic to get back up and know that they're still in the hunt for a quick goal. Very impressive indeed. Good finish by Graham as well. Hard landing here from Cripps right on his back. We talked about before the game about how Richmond just wanted to get the ball forward by hand. It didn't matter how it was going. They were happy just to put pressure on the opposition defence and they just generate this forward movement here. Castagna finishes with the goal, but that's the Richmond style of play. Messi but going forward. That Nui. Bolton. Lambert missed it. Little soccer. Out wide to Edwards. Quick hands. Impressive to Hearn. Burns neat ball over the top. Beautifully yeah. weighted it was. To Redden. Now Cole. On the end of it, Gaff. 
Little handball running out of space here. Edwards sold him all a dummy. Beautiful kick out in front there. Couldn't get it, Waterman. Lambert bursts through. Gets it wide. Coleman Jones couldn't quite hang on. Rioli. Nice ball. Some open turf here for McIntosh. And it was just too heavy for Martin, who was wide open. Now they can slingshot here, West Coast. Middle of the ground, Darling. Quick release here for Edwards. And now then, Oscar Allen in all sorts of room. West Coast devastating by foot when you give them time and space. 15 gone. Missed with concussion, of course, this talented young man. He's now back. Take a good kick from here. And that is a good kick. Big three these days for the West Coast Eagles. The difference with him, JB, is going to be able to go and play back for you occasionally as a pinch hitter as well, so he can get it done at both ends. A very impressive young man. Well, it's just a game shift from West Coast. Tempo, small possession up the middle of the ground with a bit of pace, which is unlike them. It's not that slow, methodical style. And whenever you come up the middle in an offensive play, you're always going to keep the defence hopping. And we've got two or three Richmond players unmanned, really wanting the team defence to come in. But there's no team defence because there's no pressure on the ball. What a great shot. Look at that. Off to Stadium Perth. Magnificent day over there today, X. Yeah, not a public holiday either, so a fantastic crowd. Work tomorrow. OK. Matt Nui. Cotton, Hooley, no high tackle that time by Yo, and Yo wants to go on with it as well. Did I hear him say no, in the pre-game that back. Yep. they're only allowing him to play 80 minutes for a game? 20 a quarter, so he's making the most of his 20 in each quarter. Here he is again, Yo, as he grabs, he gets back to his absolute best. Bolton, Coleman Jones. 22 years of age today is Coleman Jones. Play on! Wants something long. Going to get that. The lead of Rewalt. Barris did well. Let's have a look at the Telstra tracker for the runners today, Joe. Yeah, well, we just have a look there. We talked about it, uh, Gaff's ability to cover the ground before the game. And Kane Lambert's been missing, but how important he is at getting up and down the field. Allen down to Martin. So dangerous. Incredibly dangerous, and he has slotted it. It was only a matter of time before Dusty got involved, and that is what he does best. Even when there's no Richmond representative in the uh, ruck leper, he's still able to read the, the, the robe here from Martin. Have a look at this, just straight into his hands. What a gather. Look at this boy, he's just such a brilliant player, isn't he? He just reads any situation on the ground. There's about a thousand moments in a game that you've got to read, and he just knows all the ones that you don't coach, and he's just a star of the competitions. So West Coast by three. Marlon Pickett in the ruck here, BT. Yep. Allen as well. Little opportunity at ground level. Edwards, they stack on here. Not sure the ball's going to come out from there. Sheet. Why, why wouldn't they put Coleman Jones hey, 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 hey. in the ruck? Don't put yeah, it's an interesting one because both Chole and Natalie normally play about 70%, so they're low game timers for a ruckman. So you think it's an opportunity for a Coleman Jones to go in there and get some ascendancy. Joe, what do you think Pickett thinks about being in the ruck? I'm probably not too happy, but you see how active he is at ground level. So he offers them another avenue 
Gaff floats it forward. Ryan had a bit of a fly. Baker. Caddy. Good ball for Bolton. Fast hey, play hey, here, hey, Tigers. Hey, hey, hey. Coleman Jones out the back. 50 metres. And 50 makes Back's a start. Simpson can't believe it. Hey, push in the back. It was didn't attempt to didn't attempt to spoil. talked before the game about the mentality of the tempo that each team wanted to play with. Have a look at Bolton here. His feet have barely hit the ground and he's already turning, rolling on. And that's the style of this Richmond team. They want heat on the ball. They want the ball in motion all the time. Coleman Jones this year. Ten kicks, seven goals. He's not yet John Coleman, but he is Coleman Jones, of course, Joe. It's pretty impressive from a young guy, isn't it? Back in the middle we go. Allen, Pickett, Unusual ruck combination. Martin skies a high ball and reading it beautifully is Foley. Massive crowd into Optus Stadium as X said it's not a public holiday in Perth today or for tomorrow. Sheed. Stand! Stand! Short little ball to Redden. Stand! And stationary controlled footy here for West Coast. Now Redden decides to punch it down the line. Sheed, Allen, Darling. <laughs> lands with Foster next down to you. Might not quite be ready, X, so we'll get to him in just a second. In the middle of the ground, it's a brilliant chase and tackle from Waterman. Floston. Numbers in the centre for the Tigers. Play on! Play on! Play on! Distributes it wide for Marlon Pickett. Just keeps it inside the field to play. Thumping handball. Caddy. And Broad. Over the line. X down to you. Sorry, guys, Shannon Hearn just got a little bit of an issue down here. He's on the bike. He's not one for coming to the bench at all. But sitting on the bike, he's been there for about five minutes. He's had nine disposals. He's been here for a little while, so one to watch. Keep an eye on that. Pick it. Alan Free here. Where do you ultimately see this guy the fall, Jack. playing most of his footy, Leper, Alan? Oh, he's a key forward. And, right. and no doubt when Kennedy's time does come in the next few years, he'll he'll take that number one mantle. Move it on. Play on. The back half here at the moment as he's playing that ruck roll. Big Mark Grimes. Beautiful flight. Neat little ball back in Edwards. Good attacking position. Got both sides of the deck here if they want. Graham draws the player. A little bit of pressure for Short. Broad now. They pushed them wide here at West Coast. They've done well. And they've forced them to kick over the mark. Just defensively, both teams have done a good job at denying the other team how they want to play. And it's just such an even contest so far. Baker kicks it out in the full. Jackson, you're yours here. Go through, go through. Back on the... 
Big freeze beanies. Massive day tomorrow. Look at them all there, JB. Look how many beanies there are in that crowd. Still available too. Bunnings, Coles or online. Grab yours and support this incredible cause. Nearly $50 million. In fact, by this time tomorrow, over $50 million will have been raised, which is astounding. If you're not wearing one, it's not fashionable. Look at that. That is a magnificent yep. shot. So Dom Sheed, long and high. Nabi or Chole able to take an uncontested Dad. mark in the end. Disappointing result for West Coast. Pumping ball, almost Castagna. Nelson does well, tunnels it to Sheed. But the heat comes from Richmond. Lambert inches it forward to Bolton. Good hands. Arts gets around. Arts has got it. Through. Three in a row now for the Tigers. Big statement. He's had a quiet game, Jake Arts. Only just his second kick for the game. But we did speak about pre-game the importance of the small forwards and to get the ball at ground level and maximise basically dirty ball opportunities like that. And Jake Arts was good enough on that occasion. Had a couple of options wide, elected to go and was able to nail it. Nat Nui. Hodgson. Play on! Jermaine Jones. Sheed piling in. Yeah. Edwards over the top. Sheed extracts eventually to Gaff. Didn't have a lot of time to think about where he was going broad. Got loose players out here. The Tigers. Bolter senses that. Hooley, Baker and Caddy. Kick back inside. Needs to be good. Bolter was able to tidy it up. They go forward here. Picked up on the half volley magnificently. I think it was Edwards. G. Baker did well. Got it to Lambert. Lambert goes inside 50. Oh, Bolton! The fly of the year. Lambert backs up his own work. Magnificent Richmond goal. And they have kicked four in a row. Wow. What about that? Lambert says to Bolton... Take a parachute next time. That was some sort of leap. She's a spring heel jack, isn't he? He can elevate. Have a look at this. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious me. He's gone up there with Elon into the spaces. <laughs> That's as high as I've seen anyone, JB. Oh, he's got it going on. Just cranked up the gear, haven't they? Richmond, yeah. the last 10 minutes, they're just putting this West Coast defence under enormous pressure. What have they got? They've got Nat Newey out of the middle. Brilliant to Sheed. Edwards. But he goes backwards to Rotham. This is where they want to find that uncontested mark. And Richmond have done such a great job of forcing this kick, that long down the line, which West Coast don't want to take. Matt Newey in the air. Gets to the back of Darling, who's been quiet. Kennedy. Jermaine Jones, coat hanging. West Coast. Pass this here, Liam. Just in front of me. That's a line, Jermaine. JJ got. Stand. They need him. 15 gone. Had Jack, four in a Jack, row banged on him here, the West Coast. Jones from the set shot. And that is perfect.
accurate, of course. The Eagles, six straight. A very important answering goal. I think he's got 10-2 for the year, JB. He's, he's extraordinarily straight when he kicks a goal, Jones. Lepper, you talked about Richmond have done a really good job of forcing this long West Coast kick here, and they've just denied their inability to take those uncontested marks. But here they're being able to just get it the forward end, get the free kick, good conversion. But defensively, Richmond have set up really well, and they've, they've identified how West Coast want to play, and they're trying to, to stop it. Two good coaches with two really good teams. Nat Nui out the back, found Redden, My ball. immediately nailed by Bolton. Good look down the ground. Go forward Touch, ends, Nat play Nui. On, play on, play on. Once you get the handle, Nat, Nat Nui shoveled it out. Kennedy was tackled immediately. Graham through traffic, Fritz away. Very, very wide to Castagna. You just saw in screen there, Josh Kennedy was up around the ball and you could just see his, West, his Richmond oh, opponent just sneaking back as that extra cover that you talked about. Leopard. So disciplined in making sure that they're defensively set up well. Matt Newey to the back, Martin. Bully. And a big ball to win suddenly, too. Brilliantly done, short. <laughs> Lambert. Back to short. Stand! Stand! This is one part of the game they've brought to them, Gabe. Richmond, they're actually outmarking West Coast at the moment. The last two Stand! weeks, they've increased their uncontested mark tally. Normally, a really long metres game type team but they have now added this part of their game another one to Basha Hooley Play on. Play on. now they'll go long and end up forward 50 Barris with a big thump Lambert again in the right spot but this time he's just fanned it to the left it's such an important part of this Richmond midfield Lambert he's already had 19 disposals that was his second shot on goal and he's been missing for a few weeks but just a complete midfielder offensively and defensively. He gets lost in the chain a little bit. He gets up the field, gets back. So if you don't play anyone directly on him, he'll often sneak up and bob up. And like he's done the last few times, had shots on goal. 93rd game for Shannon Hearn. Bit of a fumbly attempted mark by Langdon. West Coast. Look, Edwards. Edwards yeah, look, lucky Edwards. to get away with this. Dustin. Back. Immediately wide and dug it. Edwards. Let's see if they can get any of these uncontested opportunities around here. Foley. Yes, they can. Cole. Waterman. Stay. As he got something on. Sideways he goes to Foley. Stay. Duggan's there if he wants. Decides to launch and go a little bit longer with the pressure that came to bear. Off hands, picked up by Cripps. Round the corner, does it clear? No. Broad, Ryan's right on him. Had to get rid of it, Broad. Make no mistake. That was the pressure from Liam Ryan. Yeah, if there's one guy you don't want to fumble near the goal line, <laughs> but it's Liam Ryan, isn't it? I think Nathan Broad was a little nervous when that ball hit the deck, as we all would be. Great forward pressure by Liam Ryan. Sets up this shot on goal. So Waterman was originally named as one of the emergencies this game. Got a late reprieve when Petrocelli was a late withdrawal. And here he is now to get him back within four points, West Coast. Beautiful kick. West Coast down by just four. straight. Last time they played here against the Bombers, they were nine straight at halftime. Makes a difference. 
Great finish from Jake Waterman. Ferociously clinging to that mullet. Whenever West Coast has got the ball through the middle part of the ground, they've been pretty good. This is a bit unlike West Coast, the chaos ball to the corridor, but it's actually worked for them a few times really well today. Obviously, Nathan Broad need to finish the job right there, and the pressure was immense by Ryan to force a shot on goal. And really accurate West Coast, 7-0. McGovern and Kelly can't wait to get them both back out there. Adam Simpson is two in a row now for the Eagles, and Nat Newey really starting to go to work in the middle, and that helps. Redden getting repeatedly punched in the head <laughs> as Graham was trying to explain to the umpire he's attempting to handball, but it all got a little messy. Long ball inside 50 to the back, and Allen. Yeah. Been a good fight back, BT, and off the back of their accuracy for the West Coast, we just see here he's probably entitled to feel like he's being. Back in his way. Unfairly treated, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to show that he was trying to handball, but in the end, it was just a punching bag. <laughs> <laughs> that is extraordinary. But what about the way West Coast have kicked it here? Bolton bit off a bit more than he can handle that time. Trips got him. So getting a little niggle in it. Cripps thought about Ryan on the lead. Goes a little longer. This time the punch away. And extraordinary seven straight they were. West Coast, Job, their overall accuracy in the comp is number one at 55% for converting their goals this year, which is down a little bit on what it normally would be as an AFL average. But yes. nevertheless, the best in the comp. Yep. Seven of the top uh, eight Eagles goal kickers are above the uh, average of the comp as well, so they're, they're deadly in front of goal. Short first, uh, forced to play on, I should say. That does, but I really like the look of this young man. Luke Foley into the middle to Redden. Got Kennedy on if he wants. He goes there now. Thought it might have been frontal contact against McIntosh. He got away with it, so well done. Burn. Kennedy now. Long ball forward. Ryan at the front, so dangerous. Cavalry arrive in the end for Richmond. Hooley can bring it away. Yeah, very cool under great pressure, Hooley. One metre, thank you. That's Castagna. Yeah. Well. Oh, it's a good game. Red hot contest as well. Baker and Short. Plenty of footy today for sure. This is 15th touch. Down the line, high footy. Coleman Jones. Stand. Stand. Looks in board, well. takes a glance. Well. Funny little kick backwards, nevertheless into the hands of someone very capable. Short to pick it. Able to hold Duggan Stand. under the footy there. Rewalt saying, come on, get it into me, one on one. They slowly but methodically move it forward. On to Hooley. 55 metre kick. Caddy one out. Hearn there. Did well. Now under pressure. Picked up here by Rotham. High one now for Ryan to park himself under. Broken tackle. McIntosh out in the full. No real option but to go down the line. It's fisted over the line and a ball in. And it's the Richmond at this time doing the slow methodical build up going inside 50. There's about 10, 12 uncontested marks in that particular chain. Very <laughs> unrichmond like, uh, more West Coast like. So maybe this game starting to flip on its head. Nine goals collectively kicked in the quarter. Beautiful knockdown, Bolton. Rewalt's got the one on one, although Waterman back and Rewalt did really well. So Jack Rewalt has already kicked two. 
He's on 698, needs two for the 700. We'll just have a look at here. They certainly haven't lost anything with Marlon Pickett in the ruck there. It just tapped it down beautifully to Bolton. And then it's not for the first occasion. Rewatch judged the flight of the ball really well. For gold, 699. Rewalt round the corner. Got too much traction. Just questioning how many of Jack Titus's 970 were kicked in that fashion, oh, BT. No, not a lot, I wouldn't have thought, Jake. Didn't go about it that way back no, he, then. No, he would look at that day. if you were here and go, gee, uh, that's things, unusual. Things have changed. <laughs> Waterman Long. He's in the back. Unrealistic, I reckon. Let's go, Darling. Darling. It's going to go to Darling. He's had a very, very quiet time of it. It's just his third possession. But we know from previous grand finals that he can turn that around big style. Play on. Play on. So 20 seconds left. Have to be perfect from here. And Vlosten again with really Play nice on. defensive hands. They go quickly, no. maybe. High ball. Someone's got to get on the end of this. Could that someone be Dusty? Siren sounds. Well, this game is certainly living up to the hype. Seventh v eighth in the West, and it is the Richmond Football Club leading by four points against the Eagles. West Coast have been incredibly accurate in front of goal, kicking seven goals one. And while the reigning premiers are displaying that classic Tigers football that has us thinking, David King, they're very much back in Division One. Well, I certainly are. It's exciting, isn't it, to watch? I mean, we know what you're going to get with Richmond. They're going to forward handball, they're going to charge, they're going to explode. And good luck if you can defend against that. And they've challenged the Eagles, who have been pretty good, let's be honest. I mean, their defensive setup was fantastic in the first quarter. There's a times in that second term I thought they'd broken them, Richmond, yeah. but they fought back. It looked like it, didn't it? But West Coast, as you said, fought back. And it's what we've seen from West Coast. They're so efficient when they get the ball in their front half. They're accurate, keeps them in the contest. We've got a great game on our hands. All right, let's have a look at the Toyota halftime highlights. Nick Natanui. He has been a powerhouse in this game, particularly Joey in the opening couple of minutes. He was in monstrous form. Yeah, absolutely. We knew he was going to be the big wild card for West Coast if they were to win this game with his stoppage work, but we didn't expect him to have 15 disposals at half time. I mean, he had 20 a couple of weeks ago, but before that, you have to go back to round one, 2016. 2016 was the last time he had 20 disposals in a game, and he's been everywhere. He's had the uh, five clearances himself. He's kicked a goal there, which is his first goal in 17. Team, uh, matches as well. So he's been instrumental. We knew that was going to be the case if the West Coast Eagles were a chance to win this game and loved his first half. Can he do it in the second half? Well, that's, that's a big the challenge game. because yeah. he's, he's played 62% of ground time, which is about his his average, probably slightly down on his average across the course of the year. But we've seen him we've seen him blow up in second halves. So let's just see if he can do it for four quarters. King, is he rucking differently to how he has in the past? Uh, well, he's doing different things. He's grabbing the ball out of centre bounce. We hired that a few yeah. weeks ago on first crack. I, I think that the uniqueness with him is now he's not just a tap ruckman. He's not just a follow-up ruckman. If he grabs the ball and starts handballing like he did to, to Yo mid that uh, first term, he's a different commodity altogether. And he's playing aggressive tonight, which I like. When he's playing aggressive, they look a much better team around the football and he's doing that in the first half. Bit of niggle late in this contest as well. We expect a fiery second half. We discussed the differing styles of the two teams going into this clash. Kingy, what have you seen so far in the Eagles' efficiency versus that explosion from the Richmond team? Well, they do it in different ways and that's the beauty of oil and water you never know which one's going to win but when you watch the Eagles play you know that as soon as they win this ball they, they know Richmond want to hold a, a player back so you've got to be precise they like to go by foot they like to be a marking team but look at Cripps's work right here gets him behind Joey once he gets him behind the use of you know Kennedy who's been fantastic not only just hitting the scoreboard but setting up scores creates something for the West Coast Eagles and you look at the flip side. This is what the Eagles are doing. They're holding one back. But because Richmond don't dump kick the ball, they're coming through handballs. They've had 90 handballs in a half of football, plus 240-odd metres 
in their chain. So what they're doing is forward handballing and challenging that loose defender, that plus one, to come forward and defend. And Richmond are getting through. It's so brilliant. It's so powerful. It's impossible to stop. We've seen it for five years. Yeah, that's no right. one's had the answer. That's right. We've seen them do it so often. They're doing it again tonight. All right. We're going to head to Optus Stadium now, where Matthew Pavlich is standing by. Pav, we know the West Coast Eagles have had to manage Josh Kennedy. He's 33 years of age. And boy, is that management doing wonders for him. He's playing like he's 28. Yeah, it's great to see him up the ground as well, Jones. Yeah, that's right. I think the week off has done in the world of good. Uh, you can see what, at ground level, what uh, West Coast forwards are trying to do. They're really trying to move around with Grimes and Vloston and Bolter, of course, and really predict uh, or get, get the best matchup deep forward. But Josh Kennedy, well, he started deep on Bolter, and he actually led up to the football really well, as he always does. And he's hit the scoreboard, as we know. But as we talked about, and we saw a couple of pieces of vision already, he's been up the ground a fair bit tonight trying to manipulate that Bolter matchup. Of course, they've got Jack Darling, Oscar Allen, uh, and a lot of other sort of key targets. They're trying to get deeper and pull apart this Richmond defence, who we know for a long time have been so good. But here he is up the ground, shrugging off some tackles, hitting up a lead. And it's been that type of play tonight that you wouldn't have thought those uh, the old legs that Josh Kennedy had in him. But uh, he's playing really well, and he's a threat for that Richmond back line. That field kick to Cripps was pretty special, wasn't it? Deft touch. Yeah, he's, he's been amazing. He's had the eight disposals, four of those have gone, gone for scores. That forward line's so efficient. I mean, the, the contest when the ball comes in, we'll show some in the post-match, is everything to the Eagles. It's been 4v2, 3v1 on occasion, Joey. Kennedy's an elite field kick. It's amazing how many of the key forwards in the competition, we just see them kicking goals, but Buddy Franklin, Tom Hawkins, Josh Kennedy, they're some of the most elite field kicks in the competition. We just don't see it enough because generally they're having a shot at goal. Really noticing that class coming through tonight. All right, we think Shea Bolton is probably going to win <laughs> Mark of the Year. He's going to keep trying, yeah. though. Joey, he didn't mark the ball, but he got so high. We were all worried for his welfare. <laughs> Kingy actually said, can someone tell me if he's OK when he went down? Look how quick he got up, though. But watch this again in, like, in replay. How high he got. He landed flat on his back. It was a very similar technique to the mark he took where he flings out the leg there. But look at him. Look how long it took him to come back that down to earth. That insane. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, Did you ever get that high? No, nah, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have kicked nah, nah, nah. I'm, I'm a ground operator, very much so. Yeah. Speaking of ground operators, some of Richmond's explosive handball today has been pretty special as yeah, well. Yeah, Kingy put it on the radar before the game about the explosiveness and the running power of the Tigers. And it started there with Kane Lambert, but watch the... As soon as they win the ball back, look how explosive the Tigers are to get forward, to outnumber to create that extra forward of the ball. Look at them there. They could have worked together, waxed that one all the way up the field. They got that loose player for the West Coast Eagles caught in no man's land. Unfortunately, the kick missed the mark. But their running power, Graham and, and Bolton and Lambert back into the side, it, it tests oppositions. And that's going to be the West Coast Eagles challenge in the second half. It's going to be a pretty awesome second half. It's going to be an awesome day tomorrow as Ooh. well at both the MCG oh and the SCG. The big freeze number seven. Nervous. Yeah, you guys can have a laugh at night. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow going down the slide as we try to raise some money for Neil Danaher and his fight against MND. And then that man, Nathan Buckley, coaches his last game for the Pies on the couch at the very special time of 6pm. We'll run their eye over whatever happens in the big game at the SCG. And then AFL 360 continues at 7pm. Simon Goodwin and Chris Scott on the panel. He sits it up for the Flyers. Where's Bobby Hill? Where's Finn Lyson? Lloyd will do! He kicked the last one! To the Blues. For two in a row for Lloyd. He spears it through. And scores are level. Kelly keeps it alive. Little pat down. And he's scoring that lead. It's up to Lloyd. And he's missed a lot. Just had to score.
Yes, yeah, some pretty crazy scenes earlier today on Fox Footy. All right, let's head into the newsroom now where John Ralph is standing by with some big news surrounding the tribunal and what looms as a massive test case, Ralphie. That's right, a massive story tonight. So the AFL is effectively conceding tonight that it has no idea how to judge incidents where a player fairly contests the ball, but his opponent is unfortunately injured. Now, it is why the league has made the extraordinary decision to refer David Mackay to the tribunal for this incident and specifically without a grading. Now, they are effectively saying that we know this incident is serious, we don't like it, but we don't know if it's a suspension, you be the judge. Now here is a legitimate test case that will set the terms for all contact from here on in. Now if David Mackay is suspended, the AFA will be saying that even if you get to the ball, even if you have your hands on the ball as Mackay did, you are responsible for the contact. It is not just a legal liability and strict liability in bumping, it is in all contact now. So Michael Christian almost always in these situations says that if a player has no other alternative than that to contest the ball, it's fair game, you play on. Now, one of those incidents, only two nights ago, we saw it with Jager O'Meara on Will Haywood. Now, he made contact with the ball. Haywood eventually had a concussion test. Now, no case to answer, not suspended. Now, Jared Harbrow in round four, he made contact with Michael Gibbons from the Carlton Football Club. Again, not suspended, a football accident. This is a dramatic departure from that precedent. So what we need to keep in mind is that Steve Hocking has a significant influence here. He rubber stamps every decision. He is now a huge part of the MRO. Joey, what do you think of this call? Oh, look, it, it shows that it's a bit of a dog's breakfast, to be honest. No one has any idea now. But when I look at that incident, and I think you said it there, Ralphie, that there was two players fairly contesting the ball, in, in my opinion. And uh, there's no reportable offence for what I've seen there. I don't know how you can get reported for contesting the ball fairly and causing an accident. Unfortunately for Hunter Clark, we all feel for him, but if you look there, he's right there. He's not electing to bump David McKay. He's electing to go for the ball. He's tried to win it. It was a brutal contest. And at the last second, he turns his body to protect himself, which I think on a football field, every player has the right to protect themselves from getting hurt. He has a duty of care to himself. He didn't elect to bump. He went for the ball. Unfortunately, Hunter Clark came off second best. We, we understand that. But he had no other alternative in that situation, David McKay. And I'd be staggered if he gets suspended at the tribunal. Yeah, and I think here's the issue too. If the AFL has a significant policy shift, if they want to come out midweek and say, we are going to start suspending those players, let's do it. But it is the AFL's job to set the policies by which the league is governed, not the tribunal. King, you have a real issue, though, of the duty of care. You think that it was failed in this instance? I have a different view on this totally. And I'm looking at the health and wellbeing of the players long term. We've got so many players on the side lines now with their lives being altered significantly at 21, 22 years of age. They've got 80 years of their lives to come. And for me, you can highlight the point of contact if you like. You can look at all the stills you like. It's not about still photos. This is about decision making in the path here for Mackay. I think now is where the decision is made at that speed that con significant contact is highly likely in that evidence when he's coming in flat speed like that. I, I just think um, we need to coach that out of players. We need to suspend that out of the game. And I'm comfortable with this being three or four weeks. I'm different to you, Joey, because the price these players are paying post-career is well and above someone missing one or two weeks of football. We've got to change behaviour. We've had this conversation 30 times in two years and nothing's changed. Either take a stand or forget about it because they've been lost in their messaging all the way through. If the head of football doesn't know whether that's a reportable and suspendable offence, what are we doing? How are the players supposed to know? Yeah, and I think the duty of care is a significant issue there, and I think that Steve Hocking probably had a real issue with the fact, as you said, that McKay came in from so far back. So why didn't Steve Hocking or Michael Christian, whoever was pulling the strings there, make the decision to suspend him, say, this is our policy here, and then, of course, you would have understood that Adelaide would have appealed that decision. We might have got some more clarity. It would be the AFL setting that policy there. Joey, do you think that possibly, if the decision is upheld, do you think this will change the scope of all collisions, or will players just, in McKay's case there, just pull back a little bit and just hover there and not run through the contest. Yeah, this is pretty important for me because I think it changes the fabric of the game. If a player now, in a 50-50 situation, having a fair attack at the football and going for the ball, now has to decide prior to that where even if he contests the ball fairly, he still might cause injury to the opponent. I think that is too big of an ask for a player on the football field to decide that before he gets to the ball. And what I find interesting, Ralphie, is now this, I believe it's a pretty significant moment. It could change the fabric of the game. And it's going to be in the hands of three panel members in the tribunal, not the AFL itself, but they're going to leave it to three ex-players to change or decide how the game is going to look going forward. I find that quite staggering. I'll give you three ex-players they should discuss it with. Daniel Venables, who's not an ex-player yet, but he's in awful trouble with concussion. Justin Clark, Scott Stevens, Kobe Stevens. Talk to those guys. 
who have lived with chronic headaches for, for a long period of time now and are really struggling to, to go about day-to-day -day life. That, that's, that's what we're talking about here, not someone missing one or two weeks of footy. Two really different opinions, and I suppose it just shows how divided the football world is on this, the tribunal, with a big job ahead of them. Well, next week on Fox Cricket, live and exclusive, the inaugural final of the World Test Championships. 7pm next Friday, Kane Williamson's New Zealanders take on King Coley's Team India. It is history in the making, live and exclusive on Fox Cricket. Paul Gallen lose, I want to make him give up. What a boxing performance we've seen. It is over. It is over. Yes, the big fight this Wednesday, June 16, and you can order at mainevent.com.au. What about the fight over at Optus Stadium, West Coast and Richmond? Who is Adam Simpson eyeballing at halftime going, you're the man to drag us over the line? Well, Joey's been eyeballing me at halftime. He's been a little bit intimidating. <laughs> but I think he's looking at Nick Natanui, Joey. You, you touched on him in the pre-game. Can, can he deliver what he did in the first half again in the second yeah, half? Yeah, can he go with it? 15 disposals, 25's his PB. Can he have a PB night on a big occasion? But West Coast Eagles, they have to be able to stick with the Richmond run. We know they're going to keep going right to the final siren. Can the Eagles go with them and match them? If they can, they're in this game. We know the, the Richmond, that running power of theirs, it can go right to the last minute. We saw what they did against the Bombers at Optus right. Stadium, an explosion. Uh, they were insanely good and certainly reminded us all why they are right in the hunt. When will Dusty drop in and just separate yeah, this game? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's what he normally 12 does. 12 possessions, he's got a little bit up he's his sleeve. He's kicked one special he? goal already, but yeah. he might have another one up his sleeve. He, he didn't even do that himself. He, he asked the opposition ruckman to tap it to him. Yeah. It was special, but you, know, you just feel like Richmond got these little these impact players, small forwards particularly, in the forward half that are going to separate the game. But who knows? The West Coast have a, have a ha happy knack of scoring when they go inside forward 50. Big crowd too. They'll get, on, they'll get behind them. Amazing crowd, amazing atmosphere at Optus Stadium. As we head back there for the second half, it is Richmond leading by four points. Well, Joel gets over Nat Newey and then arches Good. away. Long ball inside 50. Edwards did well. Straight up. Straight up. Hey, hey. Let him up. Let him up. Thank you. Stand. Harry Edwards. It's just game number six for him. Stand. Getting that look because McGovern's not playing, but he's showing plenty. Short to Nelson. That's on five. Barris. Stand. Kennedy, hands to it, couldn't hang on. They flick it out to Bolter. Lambert, broken up. Jermaine Jones. A little bit of a slip cost Darling there. His birthday today as well, 29 years of age, Jack Darling. And Floston says, there's your birthday present, mate. A head and shoulder right in the guts. Short. Very wide to McIntosh. See, Short Stand. works hard to get involved on multiple occasions in the same play, doesn't Stand. he? Yeah, we, he does, and we've just noticed at the halftime break that the Richmond uncontested mark game going. It's like both teams now are starting to feel each other out a little bit, and now it's a matter of who can force the other one down the line like West Coast are able to do here with Hooley. Yeah, Hooley has to do just that. Coleman Jones, Edwards, Lambert, Rioli. Hearn was coming at him, had to avoid. Yo, Foley, neat ball, Nat Nui, build up, impressive here from the Eagles. Darling, does he want the one on one or something better? Goes wide, looking for Gaff. Gaff now high ball to Allen. It wasn't to his advantage. Chol flew, couldn't hold it, has to rip it in, rips almost. Langdon, Cochin. Got back to support his defence. Pickett, another fumble. Gaff can spin out of there. Sheed. Nice little ball. 
for Langdon. He's been a little bit off tonight, Noah Bolter, and some of his just his offensive yeah. work as well. So he got beaten a couple of times by Kennedy at the start of the game, and then he's just made a few little offensive Back. fumble error there, and it just causes that front half turnover. Then it's the easiest kick. Whenever you turn the ball over in that part of the ground, it's always a, a free forward in there in your forward half. Zach Langdon. Go. From Dampier, way up north. Had a very good night in the set shot stakes west coast and that good night continues didn't he strike that beautifully might have just been touched on the line no one there to shepherd it through unlucky because as you say hit it really well broad stand have a cold stand See the massive bench they've got here at this stadium and then the stand-up bar on either side at ground level there, either side of the interchange. Great spot to view footy from. Barris. It's about as far forward as I've seen him in his career. What's he played? 94 games, hasn't kicked a goal. And I don't think he's had any opportunities. All forward and bolt up. Back door to Broad. Back to the and now Broad's got a go real difficult kick. Back into short. Just got him hemmed in. Play on, yeah. play on. Yeah, he's just going to have to thump a long one. Coleman Jones takes a good mark. Already people comparing him to Disco Roach, PT, an old teammate of yours. Yeah, well, you'd have to be a great mark and a great kick to be compared to him. I'm going to say, if they get anywhere near out of him what they got out of Big Disco, they'll be happy at Tigerland. This ball gets held in on Harry Edwards. And a ball up. Just interesting, both these teams not really playing their distinctive style, and, and so defensively, these coaching groups have done a really good job at denying the opposition how they want to play, and it's just going to be who can wear each other out. I mentioned Michael Roach. He, he was an amazing mark of the footy and probably an even better kick. Alan, speaking of marks, excites the Optus Stadium. 51,000 or so, and now Kennedy will line up for his third goal, kick two in the first quarter, Kennedy. And he's looked like the most dangerous forward all night, Kennedy, both getting involved in, in the air and ground level. We see Alan's mark here. 15 gone. He certainly looked really dangerous every time Kennedy's gone near the ball. Jane, 271. Not far off joining the 700 club in terms of goals, just like Jack Rewald will soon difficult kick here though for Kennedy that's beautiful though gee that's magnificent touched on the line again no West Coast player back only the Tigers on the line but that's twice in a row now isn't it yep. on the goal line could have could have possibly shepherded two goals through West Coast Eagles but no representation where you want them amazing for an outfit as professional as West Coast Play on up here. ball to the ground Redden, Rotham, Sheed, oh, sorry, Gaff, and he goes back and finds Hearn. Now Rotham. It's a big contest there by Edwards to win on the wing, just for a young player and key position as well. He's looked good. Just Hearn, but I love this from him. A big, long, punching ball. Just allowed to fall to the ground. Yo. Hearn a fight for it back was Foley. Jeez, he looks like a good kid, Foley. Gaff made to earn it from Broad. Luke Foley, of course, the famous up, footy you. family over there. His great uncle Brian was a Sandover medalist in the 50s. His cousin Dan, I reckon, played with you, didn't he, at I, Richmond BT? He, he did. And played in the Teal Cup with him to Western Australia as well, Dan Foley. So they are a great footballing family. Big hello to Dan as Edwards spearing ball. Finds Rewalt. Rewalt in the middle of the ground. Launches long. One on one with Martin. Barris across to help out. Did it so well. 
hasn't arrived at the boundary though. And the dangerous Rioli sneaks the little handball back inside. Coleman Jones trying to keep it working as well. Had a second little go at it. And just misses. And Art says, what about me at the top of the square? Well, Artsy, he was battling to get possession. That was textbook Richmond ball style game movement there. Just out of the stoppage, forward handball and then burst. Changed the angle into a forward 50 entry. Great defence from Barras to come over third man up. Duggan. Good. Long down that members wing. Matt Newey on the up. Kennedy frees the hands, got the handball away. into short. Yeah. Brave person predicts the result of this game, Lep. Oh, it's, it was a tough call, that one there on Kennedy, but it, the game has really slowed down. It has been such a fast, frenetic first half of football, and this part, well, this early part of the third quarter has been really slow and methodical from both teams. It's a slow high one. Almost Revolt and Pickett got in each other's way. Pickett now, Martin, Baker, sure it was meant to go there, but if it was, it's a very good kick. McIntosh. Nick Floston. Floston is short and wide to the boundary. Rioli. He likes to get on with it. Just sideways. Little ball here to Floston. Now I think he's going to dump it reasonably long and find something. Very, very wide, and McIntosh, he'll go back and have a shot at goals. So who releases the breaks in a game like this? McIntosh may play on around the corner. Yep. I wonder whether that's a player-driven thing, Leper, or whether it's a coach-driven thing. Uh, it's normally the players. They're the ones that sense the, the pressure in the game, the heat in the game. Do they need to slow it down? Do they need to build the ball and, and go a little quicker? Jack, Jack, why so McIntosh back? here. Tigers accurate last week with their goal kickers. McIntosh not normally one of those. That bending back and hits the post. I mean, last week they were deadly in front of goals with Bolton, Rioli, Martin, Castagna, Graham and Caddy. They scored 13 straight goal. By the way, which coach would like the game to be released now, do you reckon? Well, I think there's something Damien Harwick will definitely look to do in the last quarter. We saw the game against Essendon last week. It sort of played out a little slow at times, faster at times. In the last 15 minutes where Richmond really put the foot down, I think they'll be looking for a similar thing today. Josh Rotham. Thought about coming inside and then went down the line. It's a, almost a mark to Grimes. In fact, paid. He goes into the middle. And they bust something open from here. Bolton. Everything covered, so he had to go back by hand. Martin. Not even he can get it moving quickly. Ball gets to the back and caddy, but boundary line wins. Real tactical battle at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. This is what happens when you've got two quality teams. They deny you playing the way you want to, and you've just got to grind your way through the game. Allen. Gaff. Pickett. Allen. I think, well, I think West Coast has done a bit better tonight. Their mids have got back to help out and make it difficult at ground level for Richmond's forwards. And West Coast forwards themselves are pushing up really high to make it really difficult for Richmond to get easy entries inside 50 and take easy uncontested marks. What about that shot, JB? Not a bad seat in the house no, here. There is not. Not right Foley to Rotham. Rotham pursued by McIntosh. Didn't handball it. That's it. Richmond very good at this part of the game. Yeah. McIntosh looking like he wants to go around the corner. I think he, he was just talking to Jack. I think Jack was saying. Lurking. Yes. <laughs> Give me a go at it. Stand. And I'm not sure what Jack's indicating there. Stand gone. To tell him how to kick it, I think, B2. Kick it for sure, whether he's indicating drop punt rather than around the corner. 
Yes, Go. that because that's the style that he starts with by the look up very high. It's like the old builder's level. He puts the ball in front of the eye. McIntosh comes in and kicks it near yeah. side. Turn out. On the blue dot. No goals as yet in this third term. <whistles> Who blinks first? Hearn, dangerous ball. Jake, Jake, back two metres. Work. Back two metres. Stand, play on, play on, play on. No outlets available at all. Kennedy, Bolter, also a flyer. Grimes, good hands. Edwards, Bolton, looking for Revolt. Rioli, McIntosh again. Cameron Jones. Coleman Jones, I should say, and he had to stand under it and did a brilliant job of it. So Kevin McIntosh is playing a really important role on that fat side wing. He's the one that's got three possessions inside 50, just holding that exit space and becoming a release option and been really damaging two shots on goal and then setting up this one to Coleman Jones. So the Mr. Couple needs some reward for effort here, the Tigers. And Coleman Jones gets it for him. Got his second. Finally a goal in this third term and just a little break here for the Tigers. There's no doubt that Coleman Jones is an impressive young player. Lynch due to come back soon, Leper and Joe. What do you think is the coach and trying to keep him in the team and, and the future as well? Which is a worse on my decision because he's a very similar type of Tom Lynch, isn't he? He's that one that takes it at the highest point. A great contested mark player. Not necessarily at his best at ground level like Tom Lynch as well. In the middle, Martin. So, just to put a full stop at the end of that question, Job, yeah. I guess you're picking Lynch and giving him the chance when he comes back, are you? Yeah, absolutely. I, and I don't think it works for their, the style that they play to have both of them in the team. So, Lynch is in front, obviously, for mine. Yeah, I wonder what happens there in the future. She, because Lynch is not exactly old, got a lot of years left in him. Edwards. No doubt he's going to get back into the side. Fired the handball there, Broad. Straight into Edwards. High ball, here comes Kennedy. Wanted to really crush the pack. Kennedy had great intent of splattering the pack. And now Grimes at half back. Nelson comes across. What Richmond have done defensively and why this quarter has felt so slow and stop start is they've really condensed the ground, haven't they? They've been so adamant they don't want to allow West Coast to get a kick mark possession game, so their defenders have pushed right up the ground and really confined any space. Cochin. Nicely done. Play on. That's kicked straight into Tommy Barris. You, play, you played on straight away, Jack. I caught it. It's OK. Just stretching back that knee. It's right right testing the flexibility, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Caught underneath the body there. That knee down. Cochin starting to get Way busy. That Way hasn't up. gone far enough, so it's spiked forward. Gaff's hands good. Redden will give it back to Gaff. Good in tight work, and then a long one. It hit. Darling on the back of the head. Now Kennedy stretches away. What's he got ahead of him? Brilliant centering ball. Langdon has it fisted away. Waterman just couldn't quite get clear. Cripps now. West Coast wanted a holding free. They didn't get it. Arts. Can they keep going here, the Tigers? They decide to withdraw and pull back. Didn't want to get lured into... Continuing there, end up going to a contest off hands. Edwards 
Ryan's got to go over the top. McIntosh did really well in the contest to keep the ball in front. Grimes gives him another challenge, and he accepts that as well. Kick around the corner to Rewell. Got the little runner, and Castagna gives in the ball. Castagna around one, forced to kick on the left. Well done, the Tigers. Castagna gets his first of the day. And they found a little bit of room. 17-point Tiger lead. Game high, BT. Yep. We just see this comp contest on the wing here. Leber, you talked about how an important McIntosh was keeping his depth and his width on that outside wing and he's just had such a big influence in generating scores this quarter. He is and he's a really important player for me as you said. He holds that structure, makes sure the opposition can't switch from one side of the field to the other and good finish by Jason Castagna. He often can miss those ones. <laughs> it could be hard and mouse tough for Richmond supporters. Big bash forward from Nat Newey. Gaff runs onto it. Duggan inside 50. And Langdon can't reel it in. So Camden McIntosh we were just talking about. Mario, Nick. Just have a look at the Telstra tracker here. You can see how much of that heat map is being outside and that width that he's keeping on that outside wing there and where he's getting predominantly most of his disposals. Nine and a half kilometres ticked and over for McIntosh. Here's Rioli to pick it. Outside five. Outside five. Gee, Lambert's return's been good. 24 touches for him. Pick it. Just pulled the kick at the last moment. And Stand. Intentionally found Rioli. <laughs> Short ball to Cotcham. Stand. So Cotcham from just forward of the wing. Out wide here, Castagna stood almost, could have been paid that mark and oh, then got into the back coast. of Edwards. Just got a hold of this game, Richmond. And the West Coast have got to find a way to respond. Need one before three-quarter time. Goalless third term for them as we speak. And it's this part of the ground. This is where Richmond's forced them long down the line. They're going to have to take some risks now, West Coast. Yeah. In the first yeah. half, though, hitting this kick into the corridor right now, trying to hit it and really expose them. But now they're forcing them down the line. So they're going to have to take some risks, West Coast. Dan. Langdon. On. He does go long and high. Floston has been hard to pass. Baker. Brilliantly controlled Bolton. Now they get a turnover. What can Langdon do? He's got Martin for company. Cripps. Long ball forward. Darling. Just couldn't hang on. Floston. Good hands for Broad. Martin was being tackled. Somehow got rid of it. Baker a long one. Now the numbers with West Coast. Some fatigue starting to kick in. Rotham back to Langdon. Chol didn't quite reel the mark in. And that's holding the ball surely on Floston. Ryan, brilliant anyway. Oh, it was a great pirouette out of trouble yeah. and gets it to Redden. Redden into the middle with a real risky ball. Art's able to cut it off. Looks wide. Got Bolton. Bolton to Rewalt. Rewalt from 45 around the corner offline. And a miss and a golden opportunity for them. The Tigers were almost thinking about heading back to Melbourne, haven't been there for a few weeks. Next stop for them is Melbourne and the bye the week next weekend. I'll be looking forward to getting home, JB. Long one for Ryan, so dangerous here. Brilliant by Grimes, came forward to defend. Floston. Numbers with the Tigers, but the kick had a bit too much on it. Edwards just missed Cotchen by hand. Graham got run down. Out the back now, Hooley. 
can take the space, sit it up for Jack. It, Harry came forward, Edwards, and did a nice job. Now, some space here for the Eagles. So Edwards following up his debut game of last week with another good one this week. From the wing, launches Ryan Allen over the top. Grimes rides Ryan into the ground. Well, the ball's just been played in one forward, from one forward 50 to the other, and both teams have got extra numbers behind the ball, so they're going to have to be more dynamic and change angles to get past these both defensive 50s with these teams. Just starting to open up a little now as we get down to the last minute and a half here of the third quarter. Tigers have kicked the only two goals in it. Free kick will go to Redden. Arts is annoyed. Rosebury's correct, though. Redden, short ball, Nat Nui. Almost within range, Nick Nat Nui. One minute and 12 seconds. In desperate need to trim this 18-point margin back. He just bowls over Rewald. And then a kick lands in the waiting arms of Ryan. And Ryan, with under a minute to go, will line up. I'm not sure this was a deliberate kick, Joe. 15 gone. Yeah. That's no, that is no, no set play there. No, as, a, as a back 50, there's some things you can't plan for. Ryan, for his first goal of the day, right behind him here to get back within two goals. Got it! Just in the nick of time. Nick Knapp, just with the left mitt, dumping Jack Revolt right on the number eight. They needed that West Coast. Just see Liam Ryan Bob up here in the left of screen. Nathan Broad's got him. There's mass confusion. Basha Hawley sort of has him. Broad sort of goes to help out. No, I won't. But Liam Ryan's just left up on his own. So Richmond defence, as good as they are, got confused and rattled and didn't really get just the basic of jobs done. Loved it off the boot too, the flyer. So necessary goal for West Coast. Time enough here for the Tigers. Bolton, end on end ball. Barris. Very good intercept marker. Bashed into his own teammate there, but that's a good mark. Well. Harry Edwards gets up a little ginger. So Siren, as soon as this ball's thrown in, often underestimated as an intercept marker, Barris, because of McGovern, but he's very good at it. Here's the siren. It is going to be a big run home, and it still goes. A little bit of a rumble here, JB. Waterman comes in. Short likes to stick his nose in here as well. Cooley unusually involved. Allen having a bit of a giggle, and they're all just a little bit hot under the collar. And they eventually walk away which sets up the last quarter brilliantly. Richmond by two goals. Whoever survives this will make the final. Welcome to my mirrored room. Big Brother, Monday, 7.30. Two goals for Richmond in the quarter, one for West Coast. Richmond by 12 points as we go into the last quarter. Let's hear from Abby Holmes and Justin Lepich. Yeah, big final term to come, BT, with that finals-like atmosphere at Optus Stadium tonight. But Justin Lepich, 
The Richmond wingers really stood out to you. Caddy and McIntosh, what did you like? Yeah, it wasn't a very sexy quarter, and this isn't a very sexy role, that's for sure. But if you look at just the right of screen, Josh Caddy right here, you can see them getting back to help out. They love to run almost on tram tracks up and down the field. So when the ball does hit the ground, they're always there for that extra line of support. And at both ends as well. So they're there. So Caddy's in the play here, helping out Nick Vloss, and he eventually wins that yep. ground-level ball, helping them out and starts their offensive chain. So that winger is so important for them getting back. And we've seen Camden McIntosh that quarter have three shots on goal from almost doing the same thing back down the other end. So he holds his space defensively, but then they're also allowed to run forward back the other way and get involved and have shots on goal like Camden McIntosh did in the third quarter. Thanks, Lev. Back to you, JB and BT. Uh, very good, uh, Ab and uh, Justin there. And this is a close game. We've already had one draw today. Jeff, we had another one here. It's been way back to your father's debut that we had two draws on the same day, Job. I'm not sure whether you're aware of that. By the way, there's 12 points of uh, the difference here, so there's not much chance of a draw, but we'll see what transpires. Let's get down to Xavier Ellis. Yeah, really quickly, guys. We spoke to Elliot Yo before the game. He's capped at 80 minutes on the dot. We spoke about this game being a bit of a stalemate for West Coast. Two best and fairest. He's the explosive mid that can get the game going, but he's only got 20 minutes left. Your old man's debut week going back to the 50s. <laughs> That's an astoundingly long time between drinks. Is the high ball here? I wonder if he had the red shorts on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so this is Shannon Hearn. Generate something here for the Eagles. Get this big crowd really fired up. Long ball in for Big JK. Got a couple already. Josh Kennedy. Been a star of this game for a long, long time. Just come back one metre, guys. One metre. Just keep. It's on me. It's on me. 15 gone. A real craftsman when it comes to these sort of set Play shots. On. Play on the call. The crowd will tell the story. West Coast get the first to the final turn. Josh Kennedy now got three. Good start for West Coast. After Richmond really controlled most of that third term. We're back to six points. We just just see Josh Kennedy here in the goal square and just how hard he works off the ball to create separation and so much talent this man and his career about what he's been able to produce and then execute on the left foot there but works so hard off the ball to free himself up and give himself opportunities to take those marks gee that's given some real spirit to the west coast way They'd be hoping for some more stoppages as well to bring Nick Nat into the game, and that's exactly what Richmond don't want. Hearn with the good tackle, so some really good positive stuff happening here for West Coast at the moment. Hearn, very wide. Jermaine Jones. Slow entry. Be plenty of players here. Looking to get on the end of this. Allen at the back. Good grab. Kennedy, uh, darling, when it touched early, this man timed it to perfection. And this, and I was speaking that unlikely to get a draw, but would bring the scores level. Yep, that's a line. Stand. And where the darling was deliberately blocking Bolter from his attempt to mark there. Allen plays on round the corner, got it spinning too early. And a minor score, perhaps a little unlucky, Noah Bolter. Yeah, look, it's one part of the game you identified that West Coast need their bigs to be big and mark the footy inside 50. In the last two entries, Richmond's backs just haven't got the job done and West Coast starting to get on top in that area. How many times, Leper, in the last 10 years have we seen... Well, it's been the big two, now it's Allen with three. Just save West Coast when they're in trouble. Just find a way to kick three or four big ones and drag them over the line. We all love role players. We all love players who can get out and get it done. But when you've got match winners, yeah. I think we love them even more. Jo Josh Kennedy, Darling, have been that. And Liam Ryan's normally that. He's just been really quiet tonight. He may well bob up. Good mark. Taken by a really emerging young player, Callum Coleman-Jones. Stand. 
Nice ball. Stand. Fire. Jake Arts. Fire. Missed Cochin. Edwards. Hearn bounces it. Hooley just couldn't control it. Yo, happy to see it out. Nick, Marbio. Thanks, guys. Great sight. 51,000 in the house. Good early start in this last quarter for West Coast. Nat Nui loving the stoppage opportunities. Redden, Edwards just got the kick away. Floston had to go and he did. He split. The West Coast players there. Redden again, Edwards, they combine. Yo, Hi. fast handball and he'll accept the free Elliot Yo. A lot of room opening up in the corridor. Kennedy in front. Chole knocked to Ryan. Ryan is centering. Punched a whole ball. Castagna did well to spoil Duggan. Now Foley picks it up around the corner. And Richmond's Grimes will get on the end of this. It's a great play by Castagna to float back down and intercept that mark. Just oh. hard working from a forward there, Lepper. It's right, exactly. That, that is a forward. That's a guy that it's not just sitting in the forward 50. He's getting back that far to help out his team defence. So terrific effort by Castagna. Starting to win some of these ground balls, West Coast. They'll go in again here. Kennedy held. Say the West Coast crowd, and they get nothing from the umpire. Ball in. Nat Newey, the big concern here. Caddy did well. Okay. And Castagna. Stand. Stand. Game being played in West Coast fourth half early in this final quarter. Having multiple Larry loads at it. Rewalt. More in desperation out the back door to try and get something going, and he does. Bolton bearing down. The paddle needs to be clean. Martin, little right foot along the ground. Got it bending the right way. Superb Tiger goal. Wow. That bent the opposite way along the ground to what I think it's supposed to. He can bend it both ways. As Lepper said earlier, he just doesn't miss. He never misses. You're entitled to hit the post every now and then, or one just dribble the wrong way. He never misses. Just have a look at what he does here, Dusty Martin. Just able to knock the hand that creates the turnover, and then he gets rewarded on the end. And we talk about how accurate he is. Just cometh the moment, cometh the man. He just finds the right time to execute. But it was the defensive action that it gave him the opportunity. And... We've certainly got some fans in the crowd tonight. That's a West Coast Eagles fan too. <laughs> Translates all supporters. Matt Newey, hi. Richmond, Edwards. Shane Edwards. The kick is going Shane Edwards. Stand. Bolton, Arts. They've got it inside 50. Lambert. Off a step. Two. Big minute and a half here for the Tigers. Lambert's got his second. West Coast have been so dominant through the centre square bounce, but as we know with the 6-6-6 rules, it's really difficult to get any advantage down that end of the ground, and Kane Lambert settled quickly and kicked the goals, but you see Richmond forwards always active, always really difficult to play against, which makes it a much easier scoring opportunity. Good goal from the Tigers, two in a row. Gee, they're well placed before this game, seven and five, nicely paused for a tilt at a three-peat. 
over the past four seasons after round 12, they have won 41 of 48 games, the Tigers. They get going in the second half of the year, there's no doubt about it. 41 of 48 over the past four seasons after round 12. They are hard to beat from this point in time on in the last few years. Play on, play on. Alton told to go, I'm not sure completely why. Didn't run off the line, Barris. Yeah, they're going to have to start throwing it around a bit west coast. Gaff, Redden ahead of him. Redden will flick it back on to Gaff, outside 50. Jams it into Langdon. Sometimes you get far enough behind in a game, Job, where you've got no choice. you just got to go, and it might open up a bit this game. Right, and every time they've come through the corridor, haven't they, Lever, they've really God. been able to get a good look inside forward 50, and that switch from Barras here, we just say the intercept mark, and he's just able to quickly play on. So much space when you can do that, and Gaff gets involved a few times. Zach Langdon saw him strike one really well earlier, but it didn't quite get the trip. That's not either. Got none of that. Kennedy has to fist from behind. Allen. Dangerous tackle. Dangerous tackle. Wow. Big call. Gee, I don't know about that. How's that a dangerous oh, tackle? Just these momentum carried him forward as well. Gee, there's no slinging action. No, I think only the fact his head come might have touched on, the ground, that's about the only thing, but it probably wasn't on Marlon Pickett because his body weight was probably already so going that way. That zone is a dangerous if you're, if you're tackling, how do you stop him from hitting the ground? That's how it is, mate. That's the rule. Played from out of zone is interesting too, so... It was an umpire further afield. Here we go. Big kick this is for Oscar Allen. And he's missed. It's a good question from the, whoever the player was that asked Stay. how you're supposed to tackle them when their momentum's going forward then and stop whatever part of their body hits the ground first. That's difficult. Stay. Play on. Play on. Caddy. Ah. Langdon did well. Bolter. The big appeal goes up. And I think the umpire went in a different direction to what they went. What do you reckon? <laughs> they had a different interpretation of it. Always been passionate in the West. So ball in. And that goes straight back over. Has to be on the full for it to be... Like an umpire knocking back a DK Lily appeal yeah. at the Wacker. Yeah. Brave. <laughs> <laughs> so, he'll be watching too, the great man. He's a West Coast fan. Holding. Edwards. West Coast. Come on. Hold. Might just work this kick, Sheed. No. Taken in a really good arch tackle. There yeah, was quick. The yeah, Hebbets are good players tonight, West Coast. They are under man, but you know, guys like Foley's been good. Edwards has had a pretty good game as well. Rotham not bad as well. So they've, they've actually got a lot to take out of this game. Adam seems to be really wrapped with that. Here is one of the Edwards, and there's the other. Opportunity here. Allen. No one within 10 metres. The low bullet. Looking for Kennedy Broad, got there to work the angle, and Noah Bowler says, thanks a lot, mate, because he had me done on the lead. Oscar. And it was well done, because he did have Bolter done. Up. He has been that guy tonight, third end, mainly pushing off Liam Ryder to come third in to help out his other taller defensive players. Hit the face of Redden. Gaff dribbled it forward. Jermaine Jones. Allen, that's holding the ball. Tried to bust his way through. A lot of territory for West Coast, but they cannot hit the scoreboard as we speak. Long time left in this game. 
Pickett wrapped up. Castagna walks away. Handball to Graham. This had really hurt. Bolton long and straight. Three in a row, Tigers. What a star of the game Shea Bolton has become. I think Richmond do really well from those long down the line contests. They provide all this space at the back of it, so they love to run into it and use their handball game and drive through. And really good active movement by Rewalt there. But that's a classic Richmond right goal from a long contest. Really interesting uh, reaction there by Shay Bolton. I'm not sure quite sure what that one is, BT. Might be reference to uh, Trey Young for the Atlanta Falcons. I wonder if there's a uh, if he's a basketball supporter. He's, he did that recently against the Knicks. So I wonder okay. whether. Down, some similarities. Down to you, Xavier. Yeah, Harry Edwards just came off during that break. He hurt his shoulder in that incident with Tom Barras in the third quarter, looking very sore. Ball inside 50 here for West Coast. Out the back was Waterman. Grimes working hard. Little bit of a throw, was it? The advantage not paid here. So this will give West Coast the opportunity. I actually thought they took the advantage. And now it gives them an opportunity yep, for a set shot. So they've had... Both opportunities, if you like. All right, stand up and down. Waterman will line up. Big decision, 22 points. Get the feeling it's got to be good here from Waterman. Very capable kicker. Everyone in this stadium holding their breath on this kick, I am sure. 50 metres, it's on line. Didn't it curl around the post? Wow. That it was almost wrapped itself around the coat post. Coat of paint. Yeah. He's got a couple. And that is that is a big goal. So this is the free kick here. Is that advantage? No, so the umpire brings it back and gives Waterman a second go. Late inclusion. Petrocelli came out and he's kicked a couple, so well done to Jake Waterman. 16 points. Big noise. Yo's been really important. Not sure how he dispossessed that ball, but it doesn't matter. Edwards really good. Handball not great. Nelson's got to go to work. Just been the, the leg speed and their willingness to close space of the Richmond forwards and get up the ground. Dusty, a running barrel, high inside 50. And Hearn did brilliantly well. Eyes never left the ball. And they'll get it back to Shannon Hearn and he's got to find something. He goes long down the line. It's been a real quiet day for Darling. Edwards, an emerging young player, Nat knew he just couldn't get a handle. Edwards clean. Yo now. Ryan, if this one hits the ground, look out. Kennedy just couldn't get enough purchase on the handball. Numbers back here for the Tigers. So they get out of it, the Tigers, but West Coast are pressing. They've got another fight or two in them yet. Baker out on his legs has worked extremely hard and this kick will go out of bounds in the end so i wonder what both of these guys would be thinking right now well there's not a lot of run in the game at the moment both teams are just looking to find a little bit of spark i think you might see a little bit more long down the line in this last little part of the game just to give them a little bit of a rest interchange rotations down the fatigue kicks in it's brilliant high from pickett martin 
chest, uncontested in the end. See something he likes forward of the ball, pumps a long one. Coleman Jones, it won't quite get to him. Rioli and Hearn. Duggan's got to make this work. Real trouble for Langdon. McIntosh. Short one from Baker is good. Edwards called to go. We've got to find an available player. Why not just get it to this bloke? Archer's out of a tackle, end on end, but can't get the purchase. So a let off for the Eagles. Can they capitalise on it? The crowd urged them to go. Eight minutes. Going to have to kick three goals. I'm not sure you can be happy with stopping and holding in every situation like that. Darling. 50 metre penalty. What can they conjure up out of this? A beautifully weighted kick to the middle of the ground. Edwards got it on to Kennedy. Gets by Hurley. Low ball. Crips. Martin had the opportunity if he'd unloaded that drop punt. Dylan, Jamie. And Stand. that's the reaction from Simpson on the back of the Martin attempt. 15 gone. But now... We have Cripps lining up. Massive attempt on goal here. And that's straight through the middle. They've got it back to a 10-point game. Cripps has got a couple. you just got to put West Coast away in Perth. They will keep coming at you. 22 points down moments ago noise from the crowd. They're certainly getting involved, aren't they? And it's a kick to the corridor again. We've talked about it. When they've, ever, they've ever taken that risk and gone through the corridor. They've really exposed Richmond's defence. They've gotten the middle of their defence and then made it an easy kick just inside 50. So West Coast, if they keep doing that, if they keep looking inside and keep finding that option through the corridor, they'll really challenge Richmond in this last seven minutes. How good Luke Edwards today. Again. Brilliant. That's what it looks like. Huge seven minutes of footy. Nat Nui. Yo's been enormous. Gaff. That ball's touched. Marlon Pickett did nicely, but then he walked into real strife. Emerging before our eyes, Luke Edwards. Looks like a big time player. Play it on. Play on. Elliot Yo has been superb. call than that for the umpire is Richmond's travel schedule is this now become a factor for them they're starting to look out their feet and their defenders are starting to make easy mistakes inside defensive 50. So almost the exact spot that Jack Nunes slotted the match winner against Fremantle. What's Liam Ryan got? It's got to work its way back not going to. Marby or Chol can just kill it over the line. Gee, I wonder whether the 14,000 Ks they've travelled in the last four weeks is going to tell in this last couple of minutes for the Tigers. Six minutes to go. Floston. I'm not sure the Tigers have dropped their game Stand. in recent minutes. I think the Eagles have just elevated the, the pressure. Crowd have been vital in that. Barris here. Big mark. He'll want to bomb this long, and he does. From the side, darling. Nat Nui! Nick Nat Nui has got the Eagles fans out of the seats here at Optus. 
with a magnificent grab from the side. Now the conversion to get them within three points and to send the crowd ballistic. He misses to the right. Didn't take a long time to get set. Uh, the, the game's been played in West Coast half, 79% in this last quarter. They're putting enormous pressure on this Richmond back Turn six. over. Straight to Edwards. Dimmer can't believe it. Edwards sits it in the hole. Allen. West Coast thought there might be a 50 in it. So, <laughs> skill error exiting defensive 50. Oscar Allen, we saw him miss one earlier this term. To make it a two point ball game. This time he doesn't miss. Second on the night for Oscar Allen. You just got the sense that they were going to come at some stage in this final term, West Coast. They picked three in a row. They were 22 points down. Leper, we just see this mistake out of the, the kick out here from Boston. What would be the messages coming from the coach's box at this moment? Well, two things would be simple offense. That would be the first thing. And the other thing is, Marbio Troll, get back to help out. But he did on the last play, but guess who went with him? Nick Nat went down there and ended up taking the mark. So West Coast are going to read that scenario well, I think, and make sure Richmond don't get spares behind the ball. Wow. Kick the last three. Got it back to two. Nat Nui got his hands on the footy. Cotton working really hard. Trying to get it out of there. Not a lot of help. Gav, Charles got him. It is on now. Plenty of time left too, by the way, with four minutes. Nat Nui, Lambert, Edwards. Two. Throw. I wonder what the Crows are thinking, not picking up Edwards, father, son. This is the free kick, that's a throw. Should be a gaff free, or a yo free. Right in the middle. Look at the pushing and shoving that's going on down there. Ball goes very, very wide. Thought he should have gone to a bigger target. Picked up by Allen, back to Cripps. Cripps to Duggan, tries to push the ball on. The stoppage in the pocket will do them just fine. That new at these forward stoppages, so where he can do something like this he did that first yeah, This is where he likes to grab it out of the ruck and have a snap himself, or even watch out for Liam Ryan, little rat maybe around the back to try and excite the crowd. Big noise in Perth to the front. Pickett. Lambert. Redden's hands were so good. It's been brilliant today, Redden. Goes back in search of Nat Newey, really well done by Marlon Pickett. Gee, have a look at this. Was this a handball or was this a throw? Probably giving the benefit of the doubt and say it was completed the handball. So bolt up in the back half here. Crowd inserting themselves into this game. Coming down to the last couple of minutes. Next goal wins, basically. Short. It's a long time to hang on in your back 50. Three minutes. High footy. Barris wanted the free. Duggan wanted it as well. Allen, Martin in the tackle. Ball up. Back in this way. Rux. Rux. Fabio, Nick. Throw it up, mate. Worked it out. Yo's been really important. That's out in the full. So a bit Jermaine, of reprieve. Jermaine, yeah. Come back right around. Jermaine, on the line, please. Thank you. Sand. Play on. Yeah. Now, 
That's just a long one. Paris has been so, so important. Kennedy got a hand, in fact it was Darling got a hand in there. Jones went to ground, Cochin walked into a tackle. Elliot Yo there said he was only going to play 80 minutes, they only want him to play 80, he's already played 84. And I get the feeling he's going to be on for the next cup, you don't take a player like that off. It's a brave man to take him off there, BT. Absolutely. Haven't been ahead since 12 minutes into the second quarter. Here's Gaff with a centering ball. And there's a hole, there's a free, which way does it go? To the Tigers bolter against Kennedy. Straight to him, Dylan. Two minutes remaining. Time on. Dylan, clear out, please. Wow. Just able to hang on to that. <laughs> Jaden Short. If they're going to keep playing it in this half of the ground, the Tigers, it's only a matter of time, JB. Stand. Got to find a way to get it into their forward half. Bolter. Where does he go? Just thumps it long. Martin couldn't be in better hands. Archers away, a couple of bounces, and then a little dribbler. Castagna runs a bit of an arc. No one home. Hearn. <laughs> We've got a minute 30 to springboard this forward. Nothing Adam Simpson can do. Barris. Edwards. Now just get it and go. Elliot Yo does exactly that. Liam Ryan gets it out the back. What's he got here? The flyer. Left football and he hits Kennedy. Jeez, did it carry the distance. Doesn't matter. Josh Kennedy with a minute left. What about the pickup and skill there from Liam Ryan? Running full speed. Have not been in front since the 12-minute mark of the second quarter. What's the champ got? He bends it. He bends it. He bends it through. West Coast hit the front. Unbelievable. Talking about Liam Ryan's game, he's been pretty quiet today, but hey, it only takes a moment in the game to have your influence, and he did it right there. A really good contested ball win against the player. We had a good game today, Nathan Broad, and what a finish by Kennedy. Really the crowd crowd reaction. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic, that side? Wow. It's a four-point lead, but it's an eight-point game. 36 seconds for the Tigers. They know precisely. Yo, with the clearance. Imagine if they'd only played him for the 80 minutes. Here's Jermaine Jones and Ryan. They tangle. Still time for the Tigers. Grimes, little Chisler. Joel played on. Flossed them. It was risky. Here go the Tigers. The kick's got to hit the mark. Lee Walt's got it. Plays on. Handball to Martin. Don't tell me. From 55 metres out. Long ball. will win and beat the Tigers in front of a packed crowd. They have gone ballistic. Look at that. pandemonium in the West. Lepper, what were we saying about match winners? It was, and we thought it was going to be Dusty for a second there as well at the end, but it was Josh Kennedy, the one that put the nail in the coffin, or was it Shannon Burn? Just the ability to go back with a flight, save the game for the Eagles, all the, the great leaders did it well. Xavier Ellis, down to you. I've got the match winner, Josh
Josh Kennedy, talk us through that last shot. Tell us about it, everything. It was an amazing moment for you. Uh, I was lucky enough there was some communication from the bench, so I knew we had two minutes, which means I could have snapped it and played on a little bit to help the angle. So, no, it was a good, good, tough fight. The boys played really well. Um, Richmond are a quality side. They've been the best side the last four years, you know what I mean? So, to be able to take the challenge, take it on them, is, um, is great. It's great for our bunch of boys. You're usually a super composed person, 22 points down. That meant a lot to the footy club, didn't it, when the siren went? Oh, mate, it's uh, a yeah, fantastic win, you know, so hopefully this back in the year, we get a few more players back and yeah, onwards and upwards, so that's no, exciting. Luke Edwards, young player, nearly had 30 disposals tonight, led from the front. Yeah, young player, I played against his old man, so I know he's definitely young, so no, it's uh, fantastic to see, he's got so much composure, which we noticed in the pre-season, so it's great to see him out here performing like that. And this will set the season up, hopefully, and launch up the ladder. Ah, oh, look, mate, we get a little bit of break now, so we'll have a couple of weeks off, and into the Bulldogs are another quality side, so we'll see how we go. I know you well enough. I reckon you might find a beer over the break. Well done. Uh, we'll mate, just a couple of tips. Well done, Josh Kennedy. Congratulations, Josh Kennedy. What an exceptional moment from the Eagles superstar, and well done to the West Coast Eagles. That was epic, one of the games of the season. It was a sensational match. Big momentum shifts, big game stars standing up in the critical moments. I don't know about you guys, but that is a wonderful advertisement for our game. It was a sensational game of footy to watch. Awesome game of footy. Well done to the West Coast Eagles. We thought at halftime it was going to be Richmond who have all that running power. And again, it looked like it at moments, but West Coast, they were just awesome. They controlled the game in their front half in that last quarter. Their leaders stood up, which I really liked. Kennedy there, but Shannon Hearns last quarter, four intercept marks. He was awesome. Uh, Redden and Sheed in the midfield. It was just a, a terrific, gutsy win. They were gone. They were gone. Mm. I don't know how they won that game. Yeah. <laughs> it was two really strong brands of football, wasn't it? I mean, we talk about what the Richmond Football Club want to do. They want to get it to ground and explode and excite. And we saw that so evident in the second half. When they got through the press of the Eagles, they looked dangerous. That meant they, I still thought he was going to kick a goal. Yeah, we all did. Oh, we all like did. It. It's 30 seconds we to go did. or 10 <laughs> yeah. seconds to go. But, look, they stayed strong, the West Coast Eagles. OK, they're going to get through on occasion, but we're going to pick them off and we're going to keep throwing it back inside our forward 50. 27 inside 50s in the second half for the Eagles, six goal six. Now, normally they convert a bit better than that yeah. in terms of uh, conversion at goal or accuracy, if you like. But where they were strong was in the contest tonight. And we haven't really talked about the Eagles as a contested possession team, but plus eight in the second half is not really the trend for them. This is a, probably an abnormality tonight, but what a time to arrive. Yeah, absolutely. They've, they've been building in that part of the game over the last four or five weeks. Elliot Yo coming back, he didn't mm. have a big game, but he just, his presence in the, in the in there with the hustle and bustle of his size, it allows you know, Gaffin and, and um, Sheed and these other guys to get to work on the outside. Nat Nui still controlled the ruck work. He didn't have as much of the ball in the second half, but still had influence around the contest. And they were just able to, to just that weight of numbers, as Kingy touched on, in the front half. And eventually it was too much. Even for a great Richmond defence, it was too much for them to handle. Yo had six clearances in the second half. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, Nick Nat was doing what he liked with some of the ruck work, uh, particularly late. But what, what an awesome forward 50 this is for the Eagles. Yeah, let's have a look at some of the quarter four moments because this is where it all got very tight and very tense. And as you said, the, the Tigers were surging. But once the ball went inside West Coast forward 50, you feel like Adam Simpson would have felt a degree of comfort just knowing how well his team can score. Well, that's right. All you can really do by controlling a game is get it on your terms. And then it's up to the players converting. And they certainly had the game on their terms in the last quarter. A lot of these contests on the wing, they were winning. But it was moments where they did lose it, as Kingy touched on. Richmond did score. We thought there might have been another couple of chances here. And uh, they were able just to hold up. And as I said, Shannon Hearn, I thought, was terrific in that last line of defence. It was almost like there was a boom gate at halfway. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if they got through, <laughs> they were out and gone, the, the, uh, the Richmond Smalls. But Barras was huge. You love the game of Shannon Hearn. Yeah. Just constantly intercepting. I love this kick from this young fella, Harry Edwards. Only a youngster. But look, he's the guts to play on. And then coming board with that kick, that yeah. opened the game up for Elliot Yo to wheel, get it to, to Ryan who then was able to have enough class on the left boot. And this was a, a clever little bit of play. And the mark by Kennedy, don't underestimate how hard that is down low for a 33-year-old. Not sure <laughs> it went quite the 15 metres, but they are always going to get that paid. And then a wonderful finish. It uh, had shades almost that 2018 grand final about it, where they went from the last line of defence <laughs> oh. all the way into the pocket to win the game. What about this? What about this, though? I, I must admit, I thought this oh, is, this is going to be written, an absolute it? heartbreaker. <laughs> absolute heartbreaker for the Eagles and the fans over there. But when he took this handball, yeah. he was thinking, yep, I'm the man. Just didn't quite come off right, but no shame 
in the way he played tonight, he was fantastic. But you talked about young Luke Edwards. He, I think it's his second game of, of footy. 11 disposals in the last yeah. quarter. The Eagles scored nine times and he was involved in four of them. What about the character of this West Coast Eagles group? We saw them in a really gutsy win against Carlton last week. We know they've been undermanned and you guys spoke about it on First Crack. Just winning enough games while they've got these superstars out to stay in the hunt and then things will flow from there. I mean, if you have a look at their injury list, they've still got Shuey and Kelly, arguably their two best midfielders, and McGovern, their best defender on the sidelines. Yeah, well, we're always quick to criticise coaches when we feel they get it wrong, but when they have great coaching performances, they deserve credit. Last week, with so many youngsters to go to the SCG and beat Carlton on a neutral ground, and then to do it again against the team in the Tigers, who, as we said, had found their mojo. Kingy will talk about their scores from turnovers later. They had got their game back, so a win still missing your two best midfielders. It was a great coaching performance from Adam Simpson. I don't think he gets enough credit for where he stands amongst the coaching ranks. Look, I confess now he's a mate of mine. So I clearly follow him closely in what he does and hopefully he does well every year. But to see how he plays a different brand of football and how that's able to be adapted to compete with the very best in the competition and still hold up on the road. They get more feedback about their travelling interstate games than any other team in the competition. It's hard to win on the road. But you play the Eagles there at this magnificent stadium. I mean, have a look at it there in the background. I mean, where would you rather be? That's an unbelievable, <laughs> an unbelievable uh, spectacle. You know, the fans are loving this. They're lapping it up. That man was outstanding tonight. But Adam Simpson has a way of tapping into these guys personally. He's a relationship coach, and you can just see the investment in the box a couple of times late. They were down. He was still clapping. He was still really uh, riding the fortunes of this team. I just think that this, this is a club. Uh, win this one. I mean, you talked about the players that are not there, but those that are, they give everything they got. And now they're only percentage outside the top four, mm. which is a stunning <laughs> revelation, really, for this team that was kind of clinging to a spot in the top eight. Yeah, and they just continue to put a gap on the, the teams outside the top eight. It leaves Richmond only one game uh, clear inside the top eight at the moment, but we still think once they get some players back, you know, Presti will be back and Tom Lynch and Dan Curvis, that they should be OK. But um, it was all about the West Coast Eagles, as we said. They looked on down and out a few times in the game and they just kept finding a way. We know Richmond finish our games as well as anyone in the competition, so credit to the Eagles. So the first half we talked about Nick Nat. He played 62% of game time. Third quarter, close to 80%. And the last quarter, close to 85%. Yeah. I honestly think they said, listen, this is an emergency. Let's break glass. <laughs> if, he, if he punctures, he punctures. But the big man can win it for us and uh, he was fantastic in some clutch moments. And yeah. that mark he took was just spectacular. It was a shame he didn't then kick the goal that would have completed it. Yeah, that's right. But uh, no, he still has a lot of influence with his centre bounce work. In particular, the centre bounce work gives them a chance to get the ball in their front half. But a couple of his hit outs, particularly the one late to uh, Gaff, where he got it to the outside onto Gaff's left boot, who was able to get an inside 50 entry. He still was a huge presence. He was a really influential player today. Another one of those leaders that really stepped up, combined with some youngsters, you know, Edwards down back, Luke Edwards in the midfield. Foley had an excellent game as well. So, they continue to evolve this West Coast Eagles side and, uh, you know, they should be expecting now to be pushing for a top four spot. They do have some pretty handy leadership at their disposal, don't they? I mean, Shannon Hearn, Elliot Yo, these are guys, even with Shuey and McGovern out, they've got some real stars and experience. But, yeah, and the leaders allow the youngsters to just come in and play a role. It's mm. simple. Here's the song. They enjoy a well-earned break. Of course, this game was supposed to be played on Thursday night, was brought forward due to the COVID dramas, and really, I suppose they could have kicked up a bit of a stink about it, because if they had those extra five days, they may have had a few players back, but they knew their place, and to just get on with business, and they certainly did that tonight. We spoke earlier about Josh Kennedy and his management, and again, another massive tick to Adam Simpson. He's had a rest in round six and round 12, was it, Joey? And... Well, he was fresh as a daisy tonight. He, he looked fresh. He looked sharp. I mean, he was moving really well early. He was getting up the ground. He was, we saw some times, didn't we, King? He was really high. He was almost at half back, helping out their team defence. And then, as we've seen Kennedy do so often, you know, works hard to push forward. 
His leading patterns were sharp again. He, he just looked really good. And I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a nice lesson to, to think when you've got these veterans that they don't have to play every single game, do they, King? As Sarah said, a, a couple of rests already this season. He looks fresh. He doesn't have to play 22 games, but when he does play, he needs to have an impact. Well, it's, it's, it's a funny statistical uh, readout tonight. I mean, normally he's low metres game because he's forward of the ball. He's inside the forward 50. He's top three for the Eagles tonight. So he was serviced right up the field. Like, sometimes he was going deep down back to just help his back six. I haven't seen him do that before. I've seen him hit the wings. Haven't seen him get to the defensive 50. Four goals straight. Eight score involvements, which was a game high. He was everything for them. I mean, he had 15 disposals, 12 kicks, and, and kicked it pure. I mean, you talked about his field yeah. kicking. He was just lacing players out. I wonder whether it's a new a new role for a man at this age. It's a tough ask. Some beautiful overhead marking as well. He just had that real spring in his step. Uh, Nick Natanui, we spoke about him uh, really at length throughout the game because he is a megastar and his potential to tear the game to shreds was always there today in it started from the opening minute. And this is so eye-catching. Absolutely. Well, we know what he can do at centre bounces and with his ruck work. I mean, we've seen it for 10 years, but what we haven't seen in recent years is Nick Nat get 20 disposals in a game of footy. He's done it now twice in three weeks. And as I said at half-time, before that, you have to go back to round one, 2016, to when he had 20 disposals in a game. So he's having more influence around the ground in recent weeks. He kicked his first goal in 17 matches tonight. King, he nearly kicked two and probably should have kicked two. You've spoken about now the new tactic, grabbing it out of the ruck and that feeding that handball, it's something he's added and he played with physicality, which I really liked about his game tonight. Well, well the Eagles have got they've got weapons you can't take off you can't take off them. You can't take off his hit-out advantage. What can you do? I mean, Chol, I thought, was very good in patches as well. It was just a good game. But in the end, they've kicked six goals two to two goals three from stoppage. And a lot of it just through quality of service from, from Nat Nui. If he wasn't given to them lace-out with a hit-out, he was creating himself, as you said, grabbing the boy out of the ruck. And, yeah, that, that's a big gap. I mean, that's a 23-point gap in the game. It is hard to find one or two goals as a competitive advantage against good teams like Richmond. So to gap them by four goals is the game. There's, there's no sugarcoating that. And it wasn't really done at centre bounces. It was done pretty much all over the field. So I think Richmond would be disappointed in that. They don't normally give up big scores from stoppage. Uh, but credit to the Eagles for bringing their A game. So if Dusty kicks that goal late, it's a completely different story and we're currently celebrating the Tigers. There was a lot they did right tonight and as we've discussed, they really had their A game up and firing. That sprint and surge that they were able to execute so well was explosive. Yeah, look, this is their brand, isn't it? This is what they do. And so you look at the flip side of the coin, from turnovers, they've been able to outscore the Eagles by four goals. Yeah. So, you know, when they get goal side of their man and the forward hand ball chain starts. They win that critical contest on the wing. It all comes back to this ball here. Winning contest. Winning yeah. this. The Eagles were winning it, driving it back in. But when Richmond won it, look at the surge run. The speed of these small forwards. It's just fantastic to watch. If you're a Tigers fan, they have an, an uncanny ability to put turnover or intercept on the scoreboard, Joey. Yeah, and you, you look at it on the TV screen and you wonder when you see this. And again, exactly this is almost a replica. Both in the fourth quarter, they win this contest, that forward handball, and you watch on the TV screen and you wonder how they have players forward to the ball. Well, it's because that extra handball draws the West Coast Eagles defenders forward. That brings them up to the contest, which creates that overlap, which gives them free players goal side, and that's why they get that look. But for me, I don't think Richmond lose any admirers. I mean, as you said, they've been on the road for three weeks. Another tough little period for them. Hostile crowd in Western Australia. I still think they're fine, you know. I mean, and I'll put them in a precarious position a little bit that on in eighth spot, but for mine, they don't lose Eddie Morris with the way they played. Well, we touched on their, their power. Their ability to punish teams is 20% better than the second best team in the comp, which is Brisbane over the last five weeks, and, and 30, 40% above the AFL average in, in that period. It was the same again tonight. Yeah. So, so these are two teams playing their best possible football, and one just, just falls in front of the other. So if you have a look at the pre-game stats that we put up, so they're basically going a point for every... every in Intercept. So their ability to win it back, as you can see, is 50% or 40% above the AFL average over the last five weeks. If you compare it to the second best team, which is Brisbane, that's it there. So you look tonight, they've been able to force the West Coast into 74 turnovers. Mm. Okay, They're not cold give-ups, but just 74 turnovers and got 66 points. 
So it's almost the same. It's slightly down, um, but that's their brand. That's what they do. And we know that brand will hold up more often than not. So tonight they just got beaten. You know, could have easily gone the other way. The West Coast Eagles stoppage dominance. But that style holds up for Richmond. We've seen it, you know, year on year, week on week. So it'll continue to hold them in good stead in the run home. Is it as simple as they just need to qualify for the finals? And as you say, if their game's in that kind of nick, they could go anywhere. Well, I think so. They've just got to... So everyone's got to qualify first. And then how good their game is coming into the finals, how healthy their list is, is going to be crucial. But it is going to be tough from outside the eight. And I know you're very big on it. Yeah. Oh, sorry, from outside the top, top four. four. I disagree. If you're outside the top four, it makes it very hard to win the flag. I'm happy to take any sort of wage you want to have a lunch or something. I know you're a big gambler yeah, on lunches on with lunches. Yeah, you already owe me one. Any, oh, okay. Yeah, I do. Oh, not just yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> regardless. Well, the... well the outside the four basically means you've got to win four finals, whether they be on the road or, or not, against top four, top six calibre of opposition through a final series. There's no team's doing that in the comp at the moment, barring Melbourne. Melbourne, I think, got a, the only unblemished record against top eight teams. So it's a big ask to qualify seventh or eighth across the marathon and then go on a run for four weeks. So that's the challenge that Richmond are probably now, you would think, going to have to face. Yeah, you look, though, that there's still only really one game outside the top four, but those teams have all got the game still up their sleeve. You look at the top five teams, they've still got one extra game. So that might end up being two games and percentage in front of Richmond. So it will be almost a, a really difficult ask for them to make the top four, but I still think the Tigers will make the finals and then let's see how good they are from, you know, the bottom half of the eight. So you think they can win it from anywhere oh, in the eight I and think you don't think they can win it unless they're in the top four. Is it as simple as that? You don't want to upset anyone. That's what I, I, I think it'd be very, very hard to win it. I'm not going to... If there's yeah. any team that could, you've but got to say can. it's Richmond. But they, of course, they can possibly do it, but it'd be very hard. What about the game of Kane Lambert tonight? Uh, coming back from injury, he'd missed seven weeks. He's not the highest profile player in the Richmond midfield. We know Dion Presti is out. Once he gets back, they're looking at having that gun midfield group all back together again. Yeah, yeah. And, and they've been able to do that really well over the last few years, really tailor the program to, to hitting the finals at, at almost full health. Um, and mm. you, can't, you can't control that, really. But uh, Lambert's first half was extraordinary. I think he had 19 disposals in the first half. So he, he got a little bit tired, but they're, they're so damaging forward of centre so creative and the class is evident. I mean, he finished with 27 disposals for the game, two goals, one. This is just what they do. It's, it's catch and kill your own in the forward half. Their press is always enormous. It's just another one of those small brigade, yeah, Joey. And a little bit from a tactical point of view, sometimes Kane Lambert's the type of player that gets off the chain. Because West Coast Eagles had Nelson going to Dusty Martin after the centre bounce, it means a defender is coming up and playing on Dusty Martin, which, which means one forward is generally getting off the chain a little bit for Richmond. And it looked like it was Kane Lambert who just had that freedom tonight. And that's why he was able to get plenty of balls. So it's a bit of that flow-on effect, the chain effect, from putting some work into Dusty Martin. It was a brilliant game of football. It's been a cracking weekend of footy and it will continue tomorrow with the big freeze game, oh. Melbourne and Collingwood. Let's check out the latest odds. Huge game for the Pies with Nathan Buckley coaching his last game. Do they get up for Nathan Buckley in this one? I don't think so. I think they'll be competitive and I think it'll be tight. And at some stage, you might be surprised at the scoreline, but I think Melbourne will steady and Melbourne being what they are this year, I think will be too good for Collingwood. But one player who was on fire last week is Jamie Elliott. That is a big price to kick the first goal of the game. He kicked four in the first quarter last week. So I'll be betting into Jamie Elliott in that and also taking for two goals in the same game, Moldy. Petrarca to get 25 and the Demons to win 1-39. to Good luck if you're punting and gamble responsibly.